hey everyone welcome back to the channel and welcome to the six months full stack web development bootcamp that i will be starting from this particular video now believe me if you follow my channel for next six months you will become an experienced full stack developer that much guarantee i can give you so let's see what exactly we are going to learn in next six months so in this video we will basically start with our journey with simple html5 and css and this whole six months course will be created in such a way that even if you are a complete beginner it will definitely help you to become an experienced developer so after this we will be learning a javascript and then we'll move to react.js and redux toolkit after that we will learn node.js express mongodb and then we will be creating 50 html css and javascript projects now it's not like that all the videos will be in this order there will be some uh, video that i'll be creating in a different order but i'm just giving you the overview that what are the things that we'll be learning in the next six months after that we'll be creating uh, 20 to 30 react.js projects for your portfolio and then we'll be learning this 100 plus html css javascript interview questions also 100 plus react interview questions then we'll learn uh, next.js 13 and after that we'll be creating uh, 10 plus monster projects 10 plus next.js 14 projects and then once we'll complete all of this i will combine all the videos into one and then i'll create a 40 plus hours of full stack web development course and at the end we'll be creating a react native bootcamp course also so this is what we are going to learn in next six months now if you're coming to my channel for the first time I'm requesting please subscribe to my channel and it will definitely going to help you and also it will uh, going to help my channel to grow so now let's see what exactly we are going to build in this particular video and what are the things we'll learn now again i'm repeating that this video is basically designed in such a way that if you're a complete beginner so it will be very helpful now if you already have good amount of experience of html css then also you can watch this video so it will basically help you in interview purposes so we'll start with uh, simple html elements then we will learn how we can use chrome developer tools html headings what is the difference between inline and block elements what kind of questions they will ask you in interview then we'll move to html links images html document structure inputs forms button html tables and semantic and non-semantic elements after this uh, we will learn the following things in css we'll know how to uh, style a st uh, html file using inline css internal and external css what is the what is the difference then we'll learn all types of selectors element selector id class grouping selectors then we'll move to css colors fonts css box model which is very very important for interview then we'll uh, learn the following things width height border padding and margins and after that we'll learn these css backgrounds transitions transforms css positions very important then we'll learn css flexbox css grid css media queries keyframes animation pseudo classes elements and more and at the end we will be creating one very simple project and that will be a kind of a travel landing page that i'll be showing later in the uh, video all right so this is what exactly we are going to learn in this particular video and please subscribe to my channel and if you like this video please like and comment down and try to follow this whole bootcamp for the next six months i am guarantee you that it will definitely going to help you all right so that's all about the intro now without further wasting any more time let's get started and good luck all right everyone so let's see what tools you basically need so the first and most important one that you need here to install vs code or whatever code editor the, that you basically like i will highly recommend to use vs code because there are a lot of features that you can use here so the you can basically search installing vs code and then go to this first link and here you will get this uh, download visual code uh, installer for windows once you click that it will automatically uh, start downloading and then just you just have to install it that's it if you are in mac so you can search here so you see that we are having this option also download i will get so many options so if you are in mac so whatever chip that you are having based on that you will be able to basically download that so this is one thing you need next i already have uh, vs code installed so i'll show you some of the things that uh, can be helpful so i have some of the extension that are in, uh, installed here so the first thing is that this is auto rename tag so you can note it down this is uh, some of the extension are very very helpful this is uh, what i have and then 
I think you can also install this HTML boilerplate then we are having live server so whenever we'll be writing any kind of HTML code we need a live server so that we'll be able to uh, run that particular project locally so that each time we'll be updating something in the code we don't have to refresh the page manually so this live server will automatically detect the code change and it will give us the updated data updated result then we need uh, we have this prettier which is basically a code formatter and i think for now this will be more than enough so what you can do you can simply install these three things whatever i mentioned so you install raw auto rename tag then we have this uh, html boilerplate then we have this uh, prettier which is code formatter and i think that will be more than enough for you all right so these two if you have these two things you are good to start all right so now uh, that's all for this particular video now let's start our journey on html and css all right so what basically uh, is html so html is stand for this markup language for web pages using html we can basically create our own website all right so now what i'm trying to do here see each and every time i'll be doing any uh, concepts throughout this particular video although i'll be repeating this thing again and again what i want you that you try to code along with uh, my video all right it will definitely going to help you because this html and css is this kind of concept that you can't learn this one theoretically you have to practice more and more and this is very very important because this video is for complete beginners so we will not go for complex projects or anything what i'll do each and every theory what i am going to cover in this particular video we will basically learn that theory using one very simple example and at the end of this course we will only create one simple project which will be a kind of landing page that we have already discussed and that will be it and after that uh, once we'll progress then there will be a lot of complex things that we'll be learning in this whole six months journey all right so let's see how we are going to create our first html file so you can see that i have a folder here uh, so you can create any folder in your computer and just open that folder using this vs code now what i'm going to do here i'll just click on this new file uh, button here kind of icon and you can see that this is the new folder so i need a file so we need to create a html file so how we are going to create a file which this vs code will understand okay he uh, this user is wants to create a html file so we need to basically give a extension so for html file the extension will be dot html for css it will be dot css so let's i'll create a file name index dot html now this this is the name of the file you can give any name you want now it's always better to start with this index this is like a standard uh, writing of whenever you write your first code and then this is the dot and this is the extension so that means we are basically telling this is a html file if i give a dot css this this c icon is changing so this that means this is a css file if i give here dot js this is a js file if i give dot jsx this is a react file something like that so i'll give a dot html all right now here there are so many syntax and its structure that we will be learning but for now let's simply write one simple code and that is hello html and that's it so this is now a html code that you have written here as simple as that now i already told you to install one extension and that is vs uh, live editor uh, sorry live server so i'll just open this file with live server awesome so you can see hello html is getting uh, printed here if i change to something hello html content updated if i now save this i'll see that refresh this now this is automatically getting updated here so this is a very simple example that what exactly html is how we can create a html file after that we will be learning a lot of things so this is just a very brief overview i already told you now that's all for this very introductory video now let's start uh, our real journey with html so first we'll complete all the html basic concepts then we'll be moving to css and after that we'll be covering some of the advanced css and media queries concept and at the end we'll be building one simple project and that will be more than enough for a complete beginners all right so please try to code along with this particular video i can guarantee you that it will definitely going to help you if you're starting your web development journey from this particular video or from scratch so let's get started i am very much excited and good luck all right everyone so we have understood that how basically we can create our first index.html file now in this part we are going to learn what is html elements now in html we are having 100 elements that we can basically use 
based on the different requirement that we are having for example we are having paragraph element h1 element h2 element heading elements so many now in this particular video we are going to start our first html element and that is a paragraph element now what is basically element and how we are going to write that so it uh, basically starts with like this you have to take this and this will basically take a tag name you have to close this now you can see that vs code will automatically close this one or auto complete this tag name so it will again take this slash and the same tag name that you have given here the same uh, exact same tag name you have to give basically here and inside this you have to give the content that you will be writing all right so whatever you will be writing inside of this particular tag that will be display in your browser so let's say now this is uh, i'm giving just an example so for example let's say you want to wrap this hello world inside a paragraph element so for paragraph element it will start with a p so you can see that uh, the if i space tab here so it is now creating a paragraph element it starts with p and then it ends with p here so this p is basically the tag name that we are giving and inside of this whatever we will be writing that will be your content so if i now hover here you can see that this is the p element represent a paragraph if you go to the official doc obviously you will be able to see the all the uh, related uh, information regarding this now i'll show you one thing that why basically we need all of this element what is the reason so for example let's say i am writing this hello world uh let five more times now if i now save this and now let's refresh this so you can see that this all of this is coming in one line because currently we haven't given any specification to this each and every hello world that we have written here but let's say our requirement is that we need to show this hello world for each and every line one only at a time so there will be one hello world and after this one will be another something like that so in that case what we can do we can easily use a paragraph element and inside that paragraph element we can wrap this hello world which will be the content for that particular paragraph element so paragraph element what it will do it will take the full width so obviously that we are going to discuss later but for now let's uh, simply convert this one to a paragraph so i'll take a p here again we have to take the tag name and i'll close this one if uh, in your views code or the code editor that you are using it is in if it is not auto closing so you have to manually close this one all right and here i will be writing hello world all right now let's copy this and i'll paste it five more times and now let's save it and we'll refresh this so you can see that now we are getting all of this in one line and here obviously you can see, you'll notice that okay why we are getting some space here now this is because the default browser paragraph element will take some margin and padding obviously if you're complete beginner will uh, understand okay what this margin and padding is obviously we're going to discuss all of this later but uh, this is just for your information that it will obviously take some default margin and padding for each and every paragraph element that you are writing here all right obviously we will be able to override those things but that we will only learn in the css lectures so this is a paragraph element that you are having all right so this is all about very simple one so whenever you are having a requirement let's say you have to uh, write some paragraph or you are having some content and you have to write or display the content in a form of a paragraph so you need to take this p element and then you have to auto close this and inside of this whatever you will be writing that will obviously behave as a paragraph and the simple reason because you are writing this content inside this paragraph element which represent a paragraph now if you write this one in a different element so that will behave like the same one so that we are going to discuss later so this is about our first html element that we have learned and that is paragraph element let's move on to the next one all right so now we understand what uh, paragraph element is and how basically we can write any element in html so you have to start with this tag name you have to close this and inside of this whatever content you will be writing that will basically display in your browser now in this section we are going to learn another very very important thing that will help you 
in each and every time you will be writing any piece of code and that is how you will be basically able to use chrome developer tools or basically whatever browser you you are using so each and every browser has their inbuilt developer tools and using that tools you will be able to inspect that what exactly code you are writing if there's something is wrong you will be able to detect that one and let's see because we are using chrome how we are going to use this chrome developer tools if i now right click here you'll see that you will be getting these two things one is the view page source if i click here it will basically give you the source that you are writing now you'll notice that okay whatever i've written here the same thing is basically getting displayed here so this is because when you are clicking on this view page source whatever piece of information that you are writing in this one either it is html css or javascript that you will be able to see in the source file and you can see that this is basically the same path that you are ha having here obviously we are writing this one from our local file but let's see if i open any other uh, website for example next.js all right and if i click here and do the same thing again let's go to our view page source so now you can see that here you are getting all of these details and obviously these all are minified version because whatever html or script you are uh, they have used here that all are minified because currently this is a deployed uh, url or basically this website is deployed but in our case all of this whatever you've written here this is basically coming from the local file so that is at the end the concept is exactly same so this will basically give you the source of this particular page that you are basically seeing here now let's say i want to inspect this particular element and i want to see what exactly this element is whether this is a paragraph or this is a heading or this is something else to check this one and this is very very important this will help you in a lot of ways what you need to do you have to come here and sorry first i'll right click here and then click on this inspect and here so this is your uh, you can see that this is basically your developer tools and here you are having so many things first you are having the console so whatever you'll be consoling in your code that you will be able to see here you're also able to do certain operation here like anything you'll be able to do this is your elements so all the elements see the same thing whatever you have written here this is basically getting display here this is your sources all right so this is from a local file so this is our local port this is 5500 and this is the file name that we have given here if i now change this file to something else so that will be obviously uh, reflected here this is the network request tab this is performance tab this is application where you'll be having all the storage and cookies related information lighthouse this is basically to let's say you want to see the performance of this particular web page either in desktop or in mobile and you are having all the options that you'll be let's say you want to only see the accessibility so you have to just check that option and based on that it will give you the score for this particular page that you are seeing here then we are having some third party but uh, let's uh, ignore these things for now we'll be able to go to these elements and here you will be able to see the html so here you can see that whenever i'm clicking here this is denoting that okay you are currently viewing this particular page so this is the html code that you are written here now if you want to see a particular section of this particular page what you need to do first you can see that you are having this arrow here so what it is telling that you have to select an element in the page to inspect this or you can use Control shift c if i now click here and i'll see that if i now go to some certain upper uh, so certain element so i want to see only this one so if you notice when i will hover here you'll see this part will be ref uh, getting reflected here so that means i am currently inspecting this paragraph if i move this one from fifth to fourth one so it will be reflected here so notice this one so here if i go here say fifth then i'll go so this is the fourth one and this is the third one if i click here now see okay so that means this is the current element that you are inspecting and obviously you will see that whatever you've written here this is a paragraph element and this is the content and the same all the so this is basically the browser default uh, css that is getting applied in this paragraph element so this is just to give you one example so let's i'll add another paragraph with some different name so i'll add another one so let's say paragraph and i'll add this one this is our first html element let's save it now let's refresh this and you can see that this another one is getting added here if i now want to inspect this one 
I will be able to click and you can see that this is getting uh, so basically this is showing that okay you are currently inspecting this particular paragraph element and if you noticed you are getting some kind of this space here and this is basically this kind of orange space is coming it is the uh, browser default margin so that we are going to discuss later all right so this is how you will be able to use this developer tools you have to go to these elements and then you'll be able to basically able to use this arrow and then whenever you'll be inspecting that particular element that will be reflected here you'll be able to also change this option so let's say you want to view this one on the right side you have to click here if you want to make this one left side and if you want to do like you want to do individual so you have to click here so now you can see that this is totally a different tab but i usually like either on the right or on the bottom all right so this is all about the uh, brief introduction on the uh, developer tools now these particular tools we will be using throughout these six months web development uh, videos that i'll be creating because this is very very helpful so that's all for this particular section let's move on to the next one all right so now we understand that how we will be able to inspect our uh, elements or basically the html that we are writing now it's time to learn our second html element and that is a very very important that you will be using most of the times whenever you'll be creating any kind of web application and that is called headings now in html we are basically having six types of heading tags that basically starts from h1 to a6 so we're having h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 and a6 obviously we are going to see the example so heading is basically let's say you are having a particular website and in that web website there is a heading text you want to text or basically you want the search engine to focus on that particular text so in that case this will basically helpful in terms of SEO or search engine optimizations so how we will be able to write again the same process you have to basically write with this so we are having this h1 then h2 h3 h4 h5 and a6 now all of these are heading now you will see that these all are basically starts with a hierarchy and each and every heading elements will have a specific font size so you'll see that when i will be writing h1 so this will be the largest or basically the in bigger size then this will be a little bit smaller smaller something like that and each and every h1 will have their default margins similar to padding so let's say we'll start with our heading so first i'll write again the same process you have to start with this then you have to write the tag name so this is our h1 if i hover here you can see that this is basically represent a section heading so you are writing a particular section and in that section you are having a heading so in that case you will be able to basically use either of these headings from h1 to a6 so we'll start with this is an h1 heading text let's save it and now let's refresh this so you can see that this is very big so the reason is because as i already told you again we will be able to inspect so you'll click here inspect you'll see that again you are you are getting this kind of orange uh, square surrounding of it so this is basically giving the browser default uh, margin and if i click here so you'll see that you are getting a font size of 2 em so this is a default font size that is given here and also there are some margin and some other styles also so this is our largest heading or uh, in the heading family then we are having the next one which will be our h2 so this is an h2 heading text let's copy this so i'll paste it 3 4 5 and 6 so this will be our h3 then we are having h4 then this is h5 and at the end you are having a6 now let's save it let's refresh this so you can see that now all of this is basically it's same heading tag but the behavior is different and the reason is very simple because each and every one has the default font size so if i inspect this one you'll see that this is little bit smaller so this is 1.5 em but this one is 2 then we are having this one this is 1.17 h4 1. Point, uh, i think we don't have any one so this is taking by default then we are having h5 which is 0.83 i think this is taking 1 em 
all right yeah and then we are having a6 which is 0 0.67 so these all are the six type of heading text uh, sorry heading tags or elements that you will be able to use whenever you need a requirement okay i am creating a section and i need to show some kind of heading so you will be able to use either of it now you have to be very careful that which one you want to use for example i'll give you two scenario so you're having one whole application and in that application you are having one main head heading text so in that you need to use this h1 all right and then you are having a simple section inside that particular web page so in that case you can use this h3 all right or h4 or h2 something like that but this is all about the heading element that you can use in your html code so that's all for this particular section now let's move on to the next one all right so now we understand that how we can basically write our own element so we learn paragraph element all the heading elements now let's understand what basically nested element is now nested element is basically using a particular element inside of another element so what is basically that so for example let's I'll go to Google and I'll search for HTML and let's say go to this W3 schools now again I'll use the same thing so I'll go to inspect now you'll see that you'll be getting thousands of uh, elements I use here so you are having div then h1 div div hr h2 paragraph now I want to see some particular section all right so now let's say I'll go to this particular div here so although we haven't learned what div is but we are going to learn later for now so so that means this is a html element that we are having now I'll see inside this again we are having some paragraph so that means this paragraph is basically a nested element inside this div so you can basically say this paragraph is a child of this div so what is the parent of this paragraph then so parag this uh, paragraph parent will be this div that means this is a nested paragraph all right similar to this this is an anchor tag so this anchor is inside of this div that means this is a child of this div and the opposite will be this div is the parent of this anchor so this is the concept of nested elements where you will be nesting multiple elements inside of another elements all right so now i hope that you understand what is the concept of nested elements sir so let's see this one with one very simple example although we have learned till now this paragraph and h1 all the age elements so i'll give you another one and that is called a span element that basically use whenever you have to style or basically use inside of any particular element or inside nested elements so how we can basically do that so let's say i am having a paragraph and this is a paragraph element i'll give here now let's say inside of this you need to make this paragraph text this word uh some different style so let's say this whole paragraph is a red color and you have to make or change this paragraph to something different color so in this case because this is a part of this paragraph so you can use some nested elements so the best will be to use a span tag here so let's say i'll use a span here so again the same process you have to basically close this one and inside this i'm going to cut it from here and then i'll paste it here so that means now this paragraph is a part of this span element and this is a child of this paragraph element similarly this paragraph is the uh, parent of this span element if i now save this let's refresh this so you can see that nothing is changing that is fine if i now inspect here so you can see that now this is a nested paragraph and inside this we are having this span for this particular paragraph text here now obviously we haven't learned anything but just i'll give you some example so let's say i want to use some style and i'll make this one color as i want to make this one a red color all right sorry i have to give like this okay so now if i now save it let's refresh this now you can see that only this part is getting changed don't worry i i think we haven't discussed anything regarding css that we are going to do this is just to example that what basically nested element is so that means this whole is a paragraph inside this i only change the color of this paragraph text because we have wrapped this one inside a nested span element so this is how you will be able to nest multiple elements inside whenever you have similar kind of requirement so that's all for this particular section let's move on to the next one all right so now 
in this particular section we will be learning another very very important concept and that is list now list is basically let's say i'll give you a real time uh, or real life example so you're working on a very big project all right and you are basically fetching some list of players from an api let's say there are 100 players and you have to render all the players name in your uh, web page so for example you are having first then second three so in a list all right so you have to basically think in that way so how you are going to do this one so to render a list for in html we are having some elements that you can use similar to this paragraph and h1 or span all of this is element similarly you are having this called that is called ul now ul stand for this unordered list and then you are having ol and that stand for ordered list all right so we are going to basically see this on what exactly mean so first we'll start with our unordered list all right so i'll take one h1 and i'll give this one name as unordered list and now what you need to do first you have to because let's say you are having 100 list and you have to wrap those 100 list in a parent element so that will be your basically the parent element that we'll be using and that is called a ul now let's say you're, you don't have to uh, give order so in that case you can use this ul uh, element so this is your parent and inside this you are having all the list item that you are having for example let's say currently we don't have any api or anything so let's say we're having three list item so to uh, so list item you have to use li so this is stand for list item so this is another element that you can use all right this li element represent a list item if its parent item is a ol or ul or menu element and based on that it will basically behave similar uh, something like that because we have a U ul which is stands for unordered list so that means this is an unordered list so i'll give this one as unordered list item one i'll copy this and i'll paste it two more times and this is our list item two and this is our list item three now let's save it and now we'll refresh this and let's see what is happening so you can see that we are having unordered list and also i think we can comment out this part so to comment this one what you need to do you have to use this control and then slash so this will be now commented now let's refresh this so you're having unordered list so unordered list item one two and three and you can see that we are having this bullet circle and this is again coming from the browser default if i inspect this one here and let's inspect this part we are having evil so you can see that we are having list style type disk so this is basically this circle that you are seeing here then you are having a ul a, a line number one which is your unordered list one then two and three if you add more so similarly it will show like that and you can see that you don't have any numbering here the reason is because this is an unordered list but let's say you are having an ordered list so you have to show in a sim uh, in a order for example one two three four five something like that so in that case you have to take this ol element so i'll take another h1 and this will be our ordered list to, to denote this one the inside structure will be same but the outside the parent will be a ol now ol is a ordered list all right so you can see that this is intentionally ordered now here and this is unordered list all right so here again i'll take a li and i'll make this one as ordered list item one so i'll copy this paste it and sorry this will be ordered list item sorry what i am doing order list item two and this will be ordered list item three now what will happen see let's format it let's save it now let's refresh this so you can see that it is intentionally there is an order so it start with one so this is a first element then you are having two three similar to that so let's say if i add two more you can see that it will automatically take the next order so i'll make this one as four and then five let's save it and let's refresh this so you can see that we are getting four and five so this is basically the difference between unordered list and the order list now this obviously uh 
depends based on your requirement if you need to show in an order list you have to use well element you have to wrap and if you want to use unordered you have to use li sorry you will now you can also directly use li element so that is also fine so you'll see that this is an independent list item if i now save it let's see what is happening so you can see that you are also getting this is an independent list item if i go here this is li and for this one also you are getting some style uh this circle that you are having here so that will be discussing in the css part so this is also you can use but i think most of the times you'll see that in project wherever you'll be working you'll be using this unordered list so that's all for this particular section let's move on to the next one all right everyone so we understand that how we can use unordered and ordered list to display list of items now let's uh, understand another very very important concept and also you can note it down this is a very famous interview questions also that what is the difference between inline and block elements now what exactly is that so for this one uh, first let me just comment this one here and then I'll take another h1 and this will be difference between inline and block elements now what is that so for this one i'll keep this one very simple i'll take two elements one will be my paragraph elements so this is a paragraph and this is a block element and i'll i'll explain why then i'll take a span element and i'll do this is a span element and this is an inline element let's save it now let's refresh this and now let's see what is happening if you noticed one thing very carefully whenever i will inspect this paragraph element you'll see that this blue line you can see and that is taking the full width or basically you can say full 100 percent width or basically the screen width so i'm talking about this uh, blue line that is having here so the, you can see that this is having till this part so that means this is a block element which usually take the full 100 percent width doesn't matter how much content we are having so you can see that it's having content till this part still it is taking full 100 percent width if you inspect here you can see that we are having the display as block so that means the block element by default will take 100 percent of the width obviously you will be able to change this one using css but this is the default behavior the opposite for the inline elements which is for example the span element em element there are so many like uh, subscript if i now inspect here and let's inspect this span you'll see this is not taking the 100 percent width this is taking the width that basically needed so in this case it is taking this still this part this blue line and you can see that you don't have any display as block here so this is the main difference between the inline and the block elements now why this is very very important the reason is you'll see what will happen this span element is after this paragraph element now you might think that okay if this is not taking the 100 percent width this span text should come after this paragraph element but you'll see that it doesn't matter because it always take the 100 percent width so this span will always come after this paragraph element but if i add another span element after this you'll see what will happen so i'll add i'll copy this span from here all right let me just close this one and then i'll paste it here and save it let's refresh this see now this is taking after this because it usually don't take the 100 percent of the width same thing will happen if i now make this one to only span and the same for this one let's refresh this now see what will happen it will take only this much width and for this one it will be completely the uh, the behavior will be exactly same so if i now remove all of this and keep this one as only paragraph and then refresh this see it will still take the uh, still take the hundred percent of the width so this is the base difference or the basic difference between the block elements and the inline elements so block elements will always take the 100 percent of the width inline elements will take the width of 
its own that how much basically needed for this particular element here so this is one very important concept i want to discuss now let's move on to the next one all right so let's understand another very important concept and that is called links now links are basically used whenever you want to visit some particular web page on click of something now that something can be anything so that we are going to discuss later or whenever we'll be creating any project so you will be much more habituated but for now let's understand the very basic uh, fundamentals for this one let's again remove all of this and then i'll take another h1 and let's give this one as links all right so to create a links what you need to do we have to use this a element or basically the anchor element so again the same process so it will start and you can see that by default it's taking this href so that we are going to obviously discuss so this is the anchor uh, element that you will be basically using here so i'll give this one this is this is a link now let's save it now let's refresh this so you can see that we are getting this default style now this is a link obviously if i now inspect this one you'll see that some by default style will be applied here so we are having some text decoration you can see there is a underline and also you'll see the cursor will change whenever i'll hover here all right so it basically pointing here so this is also coming from this by default Cars, uh, cursor pointer properties and also there is a by default color also is getting applied here that is different thing but for now let's understand so this is a link so how we, you will basically create so you'll take an anchor element and inside of this whatever content you will be writing here you also will be able to use anything here that doesn't matter that this content has to be always text no you can also use an image or anything like that this hrf is basically will contains a url you can see that and on click of this it will navigate to this that particular url and this is very very important now let's say what i want to do on this click of this link i want to open google.com so how we are going to do that so for this one let's say i'll search for google and let's click here so you are having this url so this is the url for this home page so i'll copy this and inside this href i'll just paste it so that means what you are denoting that okay on this link click i want to navigate to this website which is basically this google.com and this you have to basically take this href in this property of this particular anchor element now what will happen if i click here and let's click here see so it's going to the google.com right and if i now go back it's going to back to the page so this is basically getting handled by the history of the browser so that is a different thing but let's understand so now okay now you'll think that okay now this is opening in the self on this particular page only but on click of this you want to open this link on a new tab so how you're going to do that so to do, do this on what you need to do you have to use this target property and you can see that you are having so many um, uh, values here so one is top one is self self is basically the default one so whenever you want to open in that page only let's say i want to open this one on a blank uh, or basically a new tab so you have to use this blank so that means this will now so you see it will basically load the url in the same browser then you are having blank which will basically load the url in a new browsing context all right if i now go back and refresh this page let's click here so now google.com is getting opened on a new tab all right and to see or basically this example of this link you'll go to any website i can guarantee you'll see the example for example i opened this wikipedia you'll see each and every place wherever you are getting this blue kind of text so these all are links so if i now inspect here and let's inspect any of this for example this philosopher so you can see that this is a link all right so here is a anchor there is a href so that means it's want to go to this particular link here all right so if i hover you can see it it's giving you the whole address then you are having some title obviously that you will be able to use and this is the content so if i click here i will go to this particular uh, address that you have given in your href so that's all the concept of links so that's all for this particular section let's move on to the next one so now we know how to basically create links now in this particular section we'll be learning how we can use images now 
I think I don't have to explain much whenever you'll go to any website or anywhere you'll see a lot of images now that is that means this is a very very important thing you'll be frequently using whenever you'll be creating any type of website doesn't matter so to create an image so I'll just comment out this one from here so let's take another h1 and I'll give this one name as images now this will be pretty simple so what we need to do so you have to take this image tag now you don't have to uh, close this one now you'll see in other place uh, other cases you have to take the opening and the closing tag and inside of this you have content but in this case this does matter that you don't have to close this one this image tag because this is a self close element you can say the reason is pretty simple because you don't have any children for this or basically the content you need to pass inside this image tag so what you need to do you have to pass the element uh, sorry the properties for this particular image element so what properties you need to pass here and that is mandatory and that is a source that means the source of the image that you want to use here now obviously you can use direct images url from uh, google or anywhere you want that you can just paste here and you will be able to see the image or let's say you want to use some local image so what i have done i have this image that i just paste in the folder you can see that this is the image now i want to use this particular image inside this source so that means i i am telling this image element that okay I, in, I want to use this particular image for this particular image tag so now let's use this one here so you can see that this is giving me the suggestion so i'll just save this one as simple as that and i'll go back and refresh this so you can see that i'm able to see the image here all right so if i inspect here and you can see it's basically taking from the current source which is coming from the again localhost 5000 5500 and then the file name all right now let's see what will happen if i now create a folder here image and i'll move this one inside this image folder awesome and now i'll just save it and let's go back and refresh this and i'll see what is happening you're not able to see this particular image the reason is very simple because the path is changed and it's not getting this image in this current path so that means whenever you will be changing the path you have to basically change the path in the source also so i'll go to image so you can see that first you have to go to image then you have to go to the source uh, sorry the sangam.jpg which is the file name if i now refresh this i'll see that again you'll be able to see this image now another very very important property you need to use always always i'm telling you and that is the alt property that means in some cases let's say your source doesn't work so this alt will basically will inform that uh, what what is the image that basically you are currently using so this attribute you can see this attribute defines the alternative text for this particular image now this also will help for some uh, people who are not able to see for blind people they what it will basically do the screen reader will inform them that okay this is the image of uh, sangam or basically this is the image of a dog or cat or mountain whatever so now here i'll just add here sangam mukherjee uh, let's save it now let's refresh this now if i come here you can see that we are getting this alt and then you are having this uh, name that means i'm denoting that okay this is my image in case this image uh, source doesn't load so this is how you need to use image uh, attributes you have to pass the source and inside this you can pass the source obviously you'll be able to pass any url that will also work and then you have to pass the all property now there are so many other attributes also you can use in for this particular image but that uh, for now i think in a beginner perspective this is more than enough so that's all for this particular section let's move on to the next one so till now we have i think very good amount of idea how we can use different type of html elements we can create links and images now before going uh, or basically discussing the forms and buttons let's uh, understand another very very important thing what basically html document structure is all right so let's see how we are going to do that now if you notice here you are having this html and then you can see we are having a head element and then body now what exactly it's doing here and inside this only whatever code we are writing or basically HTML that is showing inside this body so this HTML is there is a structure that you need to create whenever you will be writing any kind of HTML in your application so for now what we will do let me just comment it out 
so the first thing is that because this is a HTML element so you have to inform your browser that okay I'm writing a HTML so to do this on what you need to use you have to use this doc type so this will be doc type and this will be HTML so that means you are basically telling that this is a HTML document after this you will be basically having the root HTML element which is our HTML and now this HTML will consist of your head so this is basically your HTML head the head element represents the collection of all the metadata so all the metadata related information that you will be able to write inside of this then you are having the body which is basically your main HTML that till now whatever we have written here all right so this is basically your HTML structure now this is another very very important interview question that why we are using this doc type here so this is another thing so because we are using the doc type of HTML because you are telling or informing the browser that we are using a HTML here then you are having the root HTML element inside this you are having a head now let's I want to use a title here so I'll use a sorry I'll use a title so this will be HTML tutorial all right now let's save it now what will happen if I now refresh this so you can see here on the top this is getting changed so that means this is represent the title of this particular page so this is coming from the metadata or basically inside this head and inside this body whatever till now we have written here so that main HTML structure that you will be creating so for example if I now just copy this and simply paste it inside of this body let's format this you can see we are getting the same thing and here again the structure is exactly same so you are having head now you'll see inside this you are having the title previously we don't have because we haven't specified the title explicitly in this HTML and then you are having the body h1 and then the image all right so this is basically a very basic structure of your HTML code that you will be writing now in the next part we will be starting very very important uh, things and that is the forms input select drop downs buttons checkbox lot of other things so let's start uh, implementing all of those in the next section all right so now let's uh, start working on the forms now forms are very very important whenever you will be creating any kind of uh, application you need forms for example login form register form or any kind of that you need to create in your uh, application so the first thing what we will do so let's do one thing let's remove this image tag from here and then I'll give this one name as form all right now here basically what you need to do in HTML we are having different types of input and combination of multiple inputs using those inputs basically you will be able to create different kinds of form based on your requirement that you are having all right so first let's simply create one simple input and let's see how we are going to create an input field and what are the attributes and the options that you can basically pass so let's say I want to create input so it will be a simple input now again these also don't have any uh, closing tag after this so it's similar to image now here it will basically will take a attribute that is called type now here you can see that how many different types of type that you can pass to this particular input and whatever type you will be passing based on that it will create uh, that input here so for example if you click here date so it will create a date field if you create uh, sorry if you select date time it will uh, create a date with time something like that let's start with a very simple one and that will be type of text so that means we are basically telling that okay create an input that will accept a type of text so now if I go back and refresh this so you can see that we are having one very simple input so input is basically a user input where user will be typing something and let's say based on this data whatever they have entered here you want to store the data in database you want to call API or any other functionality that you want to do all right so this is how you need to create a simple input now let's create a button now button is also very very easy to create so what you need to do you have to use a button now obviously this will take a content that you have to pass now if I now save this and let's go back and if you can see that we are getting a button but there is no text so it's not specific that what exactly this button is about so let's say now we are having a submit button so you need to give the text so that means this will be the button text 
so now we, we are having this submit button here so this is a very simple example of input and then this is the uh, button that you need to create now obviously in the next but what will be basically learning all the form elements and all the different kinds of input and at the end we will be basically creating a one very simple form and then on submit we'll understand that how we need to basically pass the data whenever we'll do any kind of front end and back end interaction so this is a very simple example let's move on to the next one all right so now we know that how we can basically create a simple input with a button now let's see what is a form element now form element is basically used to group multiple inputs with labels that also we can call as a form elements basically and then that form element will do certain operations all right and we are going to see that how we will be basically able to create multiple inputs then we'll group those inputs together and then we have to basically wrap those inputs inside the form element and form element will basically work as a parent element of those child inputs so let's see how this will work so let's we are having a input type of text and then i'll just take another input and i'll paste it here now what we need to do is to take a form here so this is our form element now we are going to basically cut all of this and then we'll paste it here so that means now what we are doing these inputs all are part of this form here and this form will do certain operations but for now if i now save this and let's refresh this you see nothing will happen but once i'll click on the submit button you can see this page is getting refreshed if you notice here so that means this form is doing a action so that is the reason whenever you'll be creating a form this will take a action attribute and here basically you need to pass the path name so here you need to pass the path name so this path name will do certain operations all right so for example let's say you are working on a full stack web application and this form data whatever you are right uh, having here on submit of this particular button you want to capture these values of these two input and you want to pass this data into this particular path name so you can see that here uh, this is showing something different but at the end the action is basically doing this will send the data where you want to send all right and also it will take another second parameter or basically attribute and that is method which is called the http verb you can say so either it can be a dialogue or it can be a get or it can be a post method so this also you can basically mention here but for now let me sorry let me just remove this now i'll see what i'll do i'll save it now let me just open youtube now let's say i'll just copy this one from here and i'll pass this url here so that means what we are basically telling this particular form okay on submit of this button redirect me to this youtube.com or obviously youtube will not collect your data but this is just to uh, just to give you the explanation what is basically happening so let's say if i without feeling anything if i just submit here okay you see so we are going to the youtube.com all right so you can see that so that means this action is basically telling that okay we want to do this certain operation on click on submit of this particular button and also here you will be able to pass the type so this will be a if this is a button or this can be a menu it can be a reset or it can be a type of submit all right now i'll show you another thing so let's say if i just go here and search for chess all right so you can see that we are basically getting this youtube.com slash result and then question mark then you are having this search query equal to chess that means what is this search query and this chess is obviously this value that it is picking from this particular input so let's understand this thing and this all are the very very important concept so what is happening here all the inputs that you have written here this will take the multiple attributes that you can pass the first one it will take a name so you need to give a name here so let's say this uh, name of this input is first name anything and the name of this input is second name all right now let me just remove this accent from here for now let me save it i refresh this now let's see if i now do here hello and then i'll do here world and click on submit 
you notice what is happening here the page is getting refreshed we don't have any action so it is picking the first name which is the name of this input and then it is basically taking the value that we have entered here similarly it is for the second input and this is the uh, value of the second input on submit of this button now let's say we want to redirect to this particular website on click of this particular button how we are going to do that so you see that we are having this search query which is the name so this is similar to this first name and the second name so I'll copy this search query and then I'll give this on name as search query here and what I'm going to do I'll just copy this from so we are basically redirecting so you have to get this result here and I'll pass this one here so that means we want to go to this particular URL and the name of this particular input is search query so now what will happen see if I now let me just refresh this page I'll type something here chess and for now okay let me just remove this one also for now I'll comment out so let me now refresh this so let's I'll give here chess and let's click on submit see so what is happening so it's going to this particular page with the result and then we are having the name of the input which is search query which is taking from here and then this is the value and you can see this value is also getting populated here although I'm not sure whether it will show or not let's see so if you noticed here they are having ID of search I think they don't have any value property here let me check yeah I think I'm not able to see but although what is happening here it is basically taking the value from this particular input and then it is doing this uh, action that we are doing from this particular form here so this is the basic idea of grouping multiple inputs and then you can use this form element which will take action and also it will take the method attribute that I just showed you that it can be either gate or post and then on submit on user submit basically you want to do certain operation now obviously we will we will not do something like this we will be having some kind of path where we will be basically calling an API and then we obviously for that one we need to have some backend server but because this is a plain HTML CSS course we will not be discussing those things but I'm just giving you the example that what exactly this action is doing so that is all for this particular section now in the next section we will be discussing some of the more input types that we can use to create different kinds of input elements so let's discuss those in the next section all right so now let's see how we will be able to associate a particular label with the input so you can see that we are having this form here so for now let me just remove all of this we don't need any action and here I'm going to give this one name as first name and I'll comment this one second name now another uh, important thing is that this input will also take another attribute and that is called a placeholder so let's I'll give this one name as first name so this placeholder will basically tell uh, this uh, what this input is basically about and similarly it will goes for this one also so this will be our last name and let's make this one last all right so now let's say I will create a label element so to create uh, this will be as closing and then inside this you have to basically give the label so let's I'm creating this one for first name so now let's format and save it all right so here you can see that we are having this first name with this uh, input but what we need to do here we have to associate this label with this input and to do this one the first thing you need to give a ID to this particular input which is a first name and then to associate this input with this level you have to give a for attribute here so that means you are telling that this level is for this input and here you need to give the same ID and this has to be ID with the ID all right so here you need to give the first name if I now save it let's go back now see if I click here see this is getting focused right if I now refresh this click here see this is getting focused now let's do the same for this one also so I'll give another level and this will be last name if I don't give that one you see on click of this nothing is getting reflected but here it is working fine so that is the reason we need to give the ID here which will be again last name and here you need to give the for which will be last name now you'll see this will work so if I click here this is getting 
uh, focused if i click here this is getting focused so this is another thing how need to group the label with id so this is basically a particular label with input all right or basically you can say this one as form control and this is another form control all right so this is another thing that we want to discuss so now let's move on to the next section all right everyone so now we will be learning a lot of others type of inputs uh, and form elements that we will be basically able to create so let's start with first one uh, and for each and every one we will be grouping with a label all right so now let's see first i'll start with i'll take a label and let's uh, give this one name as password and i'll create a input so here i'll give a type as password sorry all right and let's give a id of password so here again you need to give the for which will be password so here if you use the type as password so let's see what will happen also you can give a placeholder which will be password see here whenever i will be typing here you can see so that means this browser is basically telling that okay you are typing some password here all right so this is a type of password then let's create another one so i'll create another label and this will be my email so here i'll create input so here you just need to take the type as email that's it here i'll take the id as email and similarly for this one also this will be email let's format all of this let's save it so we are having email here now let's see what will happen so here you'll see that once you'll submit so this is a validation that is the browser default validation that is coming that whenever you will be typing a email or you have taken the type as email here in this input you have to give this at the rate all right so this is how you will be able to use or able to create an input with a type of email next we are having uh, we'll take a label so let's take this one as date so we'll take again input so here we'll do type as date all right now let's see what is happening now so you can see we are getting a type as date also we will be able to give the id which will be date similarly here we have to give for which will be date all right so now you will be basically able to select this whatever date you want to select all right so this is the type of date next uh, what else we'll be having that checkbox now checkbox will do a label and this will be my checkbox so checkbox is another very important element that you can you will be most of the time using whenever you'll be creating any kind of forms and here you have to take an input and we'll take the type as checkbox that's it id will take this one as checkbox and here for we'll take this one as checkbox now see if i go here select so it's getting selected if i click here also see so that is the reason it is very very important and actually it's a very good practice to use this form and this id combination all right so you understood that uh, checkbox what else we are having we are also having as a range so we'll do a range so we'll do range we'll take a input we'll do type as range here you need to give a mean so zero we'll do max as let's say 20. so let's see what is happening so now you can see so this is a range that type of range that you will be now most of the times you will not use this one but also it's better to know now next what else we are having then we are having the text area now text area is another very very important element that you should know and this you need to basically close it because you have to basically give the content here so let's say i'll give here content of text area so here you will be able to pass the rows so let's say rows i'll pass this one as 30 and also you'll be able to pass columns let's say 20. save this so see you are having the content and then you'll be able to type something you will be able to also resize so you can see that it's obviously breaking but that is fine uh, let's change this one let's make this one as 10 and we'll do this one as 40. now let's see okay i can see that 
to be able to basically change this one so this is another uh, input element that or form element that you will be uh, you will be able to create next at the end we are having the select now select is basically in another very very important so select is whenever you'll be see whenever you'll go any website you'll be seeing this drop down and from the drop down you have to select something that is basically a select element so how it will work this select you have to take the main select wrapper and inside this you will be having the option so let's say this is option one then you are having option two and three so let's say this is option two and this is three so this also will be able to pass the name so let's say i'll pass this one as select id this will be select all right all right now here you'll be able to pass the value so let's say for this one the value is one for this one value is two and for this one value is three and also let's take another label and this label will be for this select so because we have given the idea select so again we have to give the for as this select all right now let's see what is happening here see it's getting highlighted if i select we will be able to select something so now what will happen if i now go to the top we don't have any accent now let's fill everything and let's see what is happening so i'll give my first name then we are having last name then password email select some date and then we'll select option two let's click on submit all right so i think we don't we are not having these things maybe we don't have given the name here pretty much sure let me just give all of this name yep so this will be password we'll give for now then this will be a name of email then we'll give a name of date let's give a name of checkbox this will be name of range uh, this will give a name of text area and this will be select now let's see now let's let me just refresh this and i'll type something here first name last name we'll give some password we'll give some email select some date and then we'll select option 2 also let's submit so you can see all the data that whatever obviously we are able to see the password but that should not happen but that is a different thing but you can see all the things that we are able to basically see here whatever we have given checkbox is on you can see range value text area content and select is option uh, option 2 that we have selected so now what will happen whatever data that you are basically getting here this data you will be able to easily save and then you will be able to pass this data to your backend and then you will be able to store this in a database so this is all about all the form elements that we should know i think this will be more than enough and this is all about our form section so now let's move on to the next one hey everyone before moving to the next section we need to discuss another input type and that is how basically we will be able to create radio buttons so let's see how we are going to do that so for this one i will take another uh, label here and let's uh, give this one name as radio button one and here to create this one again we have to take input and here we have to pass the type as radio all right and for uh, sorry i'll pass a id so id i'll pass this one as radio one so i'll pass here for as radio one similarly i'll just copy this and i'll paste it here so i'll make this one as radio two so this will be radio two and this will be radio two now let's see what will happen if i now save this one so you can see that we are having two radio button and if i click here both we are able to select but let's say in most of the scenario what you need to do you have to group multiple radio buttons and then only one time you can click only one radio button at a time basically so either you can create this radio button one or you can create this radio button two so how we are going to do this one so to do this one what we need to do we have to give the name attribute as same for both the cases so let's say we are having name as radio button something like that 
and the same name you need to pass in this radio button also so this is our radio button if i now save it now let's go back now see if i select here this is getting selected if i select here only this one is getting selected all right so you can see that so that means now these both the radio buttons are grouped together all right now what will happen let's see if i submit here so here you can see that we are getting radio button is on but to pass the value you need to pass a value parameter so let's say here i'll pass a value so this will be radio button value one and for this one i'll pass here value as radio button value two now let's save it now let's see what will happen so i'll remove all of this if i now select this one let's click on submit so now you see we are getting radio button and it is explicitly telling that you have selected the first radio button so if i let's say remove again all of these and let's uh, let me refresh this let's click on the second one let's click on submit now you see you have selected on the second radio button so in sum up you have to basically first we have grouped all together multiple radio button you have to keep the name as same in both the cases and you have to pass the unique value for each and every radio button so that every time you will click that radio button will be selected so this is another thing i just uh, forgot to mention this this is a very important form element most of the times in form you will be having this thing for example i'll give you one very common scenario you are creating any registration form and you are having a gender so either it will be a man man woman or other something like that so you can create uh, click only one at a time so in that case you have to group these radio buttons and based on that whatever i have just discussed so in that way you have to create this one all right so this is all about the all the form things that we need so now let's move on to the next one all right everyone so now we know that how we can able to create all types of form controls or basically input types we have discussed now let's uh understand another very very important things that you need to know and that is how you can create html tables now tables itself is a very very large subject there are a lot of things to learn but because this is a beginner level course that we are creating so you need to first know how you can create simple html table from scratch believe me most of the times in in interview they will ask you how you can create a simple tables or what are the elements and or basically what are the elements uh, you need to create a html table from scratch all right so let's see how we are going to do this one so let's do one thing let's comment out this form from here now i'll take another h1 and i'll give this one name as table and let's give this one as student table list all right the first thing you need as the name suggests so this is a table element that you need to take so you can see that this is data with one or more dimension in the form of a table now here the first thing you need table will have a like it's not mandatory but it should have a table head and then it should have a table body just like you are having this html head and html body so inside this you need to take a table head which will uh, like you have to write like this so this will be t head that means this is your table head and inside table head you will be having multiple table rows so let's say to create a table row you have to take this tr which denotes that this is a table row all right this represents the rows of cells in a table and inside this table row you will be having the each and every table header all right because this is a header we are creating right so let's say we are having three header so this will be th now here what you need to do so you can see that this is a header cell so here let's say this is our student name then i'll copy this this is our student roll number and next let's say we are having student grade correct now let's format this and let's save it let's see what is happening so we're having student name student roll number and student grade and you can see that we are getting this one in bold and this is from basically from browser default styling now we need to create the table body again to create the body so this will be t body so this will be the table body section and again inside this you have to create the multiple table rows we are having so let's say you are having 100 students so you have to create 100 uh, tiers because each and every one will be single table row so here i'll create for now three so one will be 
one table row second third now inside this you have to basically give the value right so this is our table head so here you need to give value so to create the table cell you need to give td so here you need to take td so this td is basically the data cell in a table so let's say the first student name is uh, anything like arjun and then you'll copy this and paste it here the roll number is let's say 10 and the student grade is let's say a all right now let's copy this and let's paste it here and here so this will be let's say jonathan and this is 20 grade is c and let's say this is lisa grade uh, sorry the roll number is 45 grade is d all right so that means you are having three table rows and inside each and table rows this table row is denoting this value that you are having the student name is arjun if i now save this so we are having first student name arjun this is the roll number and this is the grade of this particular student then jonathan lisa so similarly you can add 100 data here for each and every data you have to create this table row and inside this you have to basically create the td which will consist of the data that will denote for this particular header that we are having so this is how you need to create a table so i think with this we have almost completed all the basic things that you need for html purposes in the next section we'll be learning another very important interview questions and for this one that will be kind of theory that is what is the difference between cementing and non cementing elements and then after that we'll recap each and everything whatever we have learned so far and then we'll move to the css section so let's uh, learn all of this in the next section all right everyone so till now we have almost completed all the html concepts that are required for a beginner perspective now let's understand this concept what is html semantic elements and non-semantic elements now this is a very very popular interview questions also so semantic elements is basically elements with a meaning what basically is that let's say for example we are having this div and this span so these two are non-semantic elements that means it doesn't tell that what exactly we are doing with this div and span but there are some semantic elements that means it will explicitly tell the user that okay this is a form or this is a table this is an article this is a section this is a aside this is an app bar so these all the elements which basically clearly defines its content all right so these all are called semantic elements so in interview you can simply tell in one uh, line answer like semantic elements are those elements has a meaning on the other side non semantic elements for example div and span these things don't have any meaning all right this tells nothing about its content some of the semantic elements you, if you notice here so let's say you are building a uh, web application and then the first thing you will be having on the top of the web which is a header now you can't use a article here instead of header right so that means you have to use a header here so that means whenever a different uh, developer will see your code they will understand okay this is a header component similarly this is a particular section so you can have multiple section in your uh, uh, project that you are building then this is a aside and in the bottom you are having a footer so that means it will basically tell explicitly that okay this is a footer component that's why it's the bottom of the page so this is the concept of the semantic and non semantic elements so this is just as i want to give some overview before giving you the html recap so i think till now we have almost completed all of this and in the next video we'll be discussing some of the uh, concepts or recap that we have learned so far and after that we'll be start our journey with css Alright everyone, so I think now we have almost completed all the basic concepts that you need to start your HTML journey. So now let's quickly recap all the things that you have learned so far. So the first thing is that to create a HTML file, you have to basically give this .html extension. So this is the first step. Now let's move on to the next one. We will be doing this one in very short. So the first thing is that whenever you will be creating an HTML file, you have to basically tell the browser that we are basically writing a document type which is a HTML. So for this one, we use this doc type html then we are having the root html tag and inside of this we can basically divide this uh, section into two parts one will be the html head where basically we will be having all the metadata related information and then we are having the body which basically consists the html structure which we are seeing in this browser all right now let's start with the first one so in html we already we already discussed that we are having uh, so many elements for example we are having paragraph elements which is a block element which will take the full 
100% width then we are having all the headings so heading will basically varies from h1 to a6 each and every heading has their own browser default style margin padding that we will be discussing when we'll be doing our css then we basically discuss how we can nest multiple elements uh, uh, with each other so for example here we are using a span inside of this paragraph then we discuss how we can create our list so there are two type of list one is an unordered list then we are having the ordered list now for unordered list we have to basically use the evil as a parent element and inside of this we have to create each and every li which is the list item and for ordered we are having ol which will basically denote it's a ordered list now next we are having uh, we also discussed that the difference between inline and block elements all right so inline elements will take how much width it's necessary for that particular content but uh, irrespective of the content block elements will always take the full width or basically 100 percent then we discuss how we can create links so for links you have to take this anchor tag then you have to basically pass the hr href attribute which will uh, basically take the url that you want to navigate to and also it will take some uh, parameters like target if you don't give anything so it will open the link in the same page if you give target as blank so it will open in the new tab then we understand how we can create images so you have to take image we don't have to so this is basically a self close tag it will take a source so in say source you have to pass the source path the image path and also you have you can pass an alternative text that which this image is about now next we understood that how we can create forms what what is form action what is the method that we can use we discuss various type of inputs like type of text password email how we can create select elements input type of range date picker text area checkbox and radio button and at the end we understood how we can create our table so table is basically again consist of t head and t body so inside t head we are having in table row which will consist of all the th and then inside t body we are having each and every table row and inside each and every table row we are having the table cell which will basically denote the cell value that we are having corresponding to this table header so this is all about the things that we need for now to start our html journey so that's all for this particular section which will cover all the basics and now what will be our next step so next step what we are going to do we will be basically covering all the basic css concepts that you need then we will be moving to css flexbox concepts then we'll be moving to css grid responsive design media queries animation and after that we will be basically creating some of the projects all right so let's get started there are a lot of things that we need to do now till this but if you're liking this particular video please give a like and subscribe because if you like this video obviously youtube will recommend this video to like other people and it will definitely help me to grow my channel and also if you really like please share with your friends also so let's get started with our css journey all right everyone so welcome to the css uh, tutorial of this particular video so now we will be start our learning css so what basically css i think we don't have to explain too much theory what we are going to do each and everything we will be uh, learning using exercises so css is basically whatever html code you are writing you are basically giving life to that html code so html code is kind of like a skeleton and you are giving style to that particular skeleton something like that now the first thing is that you have to learn that how many ways you can apply css to this particular index.html file now you may note it down this is another very important interview questions that so interview questions will be something like this that uh, how many ways you can style your html and what is the best approach something like that so mainly there are three ways you can do that so the first one is uh, inline css then you are having internal css and at the end you are having the best way which is external css so let uh, start with all of this in this particular section so first is inline so inline is basically whenever you are having let's say some html elements and you want to style a particular element so inline means you are basically writing style in that element only all right you are not using any third party file or internal html to create the style you are directly applying the style in that particular element or html element only so let's see how this will work so for example you will do very very simple inside this body i will take one h1 and I will give this one name as inline h1 
element now why we will be writing like this so that uh, whenever you will be practicing something like that it will be very, very easy for you to understand all right to style this one so if i now save this obviously we are getting this one now let's say the requirement is that you have to give red color to this h1 element all right how you are going to do that and you have to do it in line so to do this one you just have to pass a style attribute here now this is in line because you are writing inside this element only and this will be applicable in this h1 element only and here you have to give a color so here you can see that we are having color obviously we'll be getting all the options now let's will be will be starting with very very simple we want to give this one a yellow color that's it if i now save this and let's go back so you can see that this is a the color is basically changed to yellow and this we have done using inline uh, style all right so let's see what is happening here so i'll just do inspect and we'll so here you can see that it's getting applied here and because you are given uh, style in that element only so that is the reason it is overriding the browser default color or basically the black color that you already had so it's now overriding and then the color is getting changed to yellow now let's see if i now change to red so now this will be getting changed to red all right as simple as that now let's say you want to add some more uh, style properties so what you need to do you have to give this colon and after that let's i want to give a size font size so i'll give a font size we'll be discussing this one later but for now uh, we usually give font size in either rem em or pixel so we'll give, uh, let's say give this one as very big something like 100 pixel all right now let's save it now see so now it's 100 pixel and here okay so here only you can see this is now getting applied if i now remove this obviously it will take the default one or else if you noticed here it is now overriding the user uh, agent style sheet or basically the default styles style sheet that it already had that means it's taking from the inline one so this is all about the inline style all right so now let's learn how we can do internal styling now internal styling means you will be writing style inside this html file only you will not be creating any other separate css file but you will not be writing something like this now this is not a good practice obviously because let's say you are having 100 h1 and you have to make the color red for each and every uh, h1 that you are having so it will be very very difficult for you so you have to write each and every h1 the same inline style that you are writing so i'll just comment it out and let's say i'll just do a h1 so let's give this one as hello css and i'll do another h1 and i'll do this one as hello html all right let's save it so you're getting both this one now how we can uh, write internal css to, to write internal css you can see that you are having this head uh, tag right so inside this you have to take style all right now inside this style you can write whatever css you want to write that will be applicable in this particular uh, file whatever elements that you are having so for example let's say i want to style this h1 here how you can do that so you have to target this h1 so i'll write h1 that means we are targeting all the h1 elements in this particular file and then you have to take this curly bracket all right so here inside this you basically need to take the property that you want to use so property is basically the color is the property and red is the value here so now i want to use color which is my property and i want to make this one as red that's it so now let's save it awesome so now you can see that this is now getting changed right so it's coming from this index.html line number 8 and if i go to the source you'll see that you're getting this one from here in this style tag this is all about the internal styling for example let's say you're having a span so this is a span and i will target the span and i'll make the color as blue that's it let's save it so this is getting changed to blue all right so this is the second way of doing now this is at least better than the this one in line one but there is a best way and that obviously you will be doing most of the times all right and that is to create a separate file as the name suggests so you'll be creating an external file and then what you will do you will link that file 
in this HTML and whatever code uh, CSS that you will be writing that will be totally separate all right so it will be very very easy to manage so that is the reason this is the best way of writing and this is the interview questions very very important so what you can do you'll go here and then i'll create another file here in this here only so i'll do styles.css now the first thing is that you have to link this here all right how you are going to do that so first thing i'll just remove this one or comment out this one from here and then you have to basically take this link here all right now here what you have to pass you have to pass a real property which will be style sheet and then you have to link it so you have to use a href so href will be the path name for this uh, style so you are having this style.css that's it so that means what you are doing you are basically telling that okay i want to link this style.css file in this html file let's save this now if we go here obviously this will not applicable because we haven't write any css but now if i do the same thing and let's say i'll do h1 and then i'll do a color as red and if i now save this see now this is getting changed right and let's go to this element so you see it's coming from now style.css which is a separate file all right the same you can do for span also so i'll do span and we'll do color as let's say we'll do something like this one blue violet let's save it so this is getting changed so that means you learn three things that there are three ways we can link or use a css the first one is the inline that you will use directly in the element second is internal that you'll write in this html file only and third which is the best way you'll create a separate html uh, css file and that will link in this index.html file all right so that's all for this particular video let's move on to the next section so now we know that how how many ways we can use css so there are mainly three ways now let's understand some of the selectors so we'll start with very basics uh, that is called the element selector so what is the element selector so element selector is nothing but whatever we have done till now so let's say for example you are having 100 h1 now h1 is the element html element or for example let's say you are having 10 paragraph in this particular html file and you want to style each and every h1 or paragraph that particular element with some particular style let's say color is something so in that case what you need to do you just have to target all the h1 which is basically the element so you are targeting that element selector and based on that you will you are writing the style so for example let's say i'm having some paragraph so we'll do paragraph and i'll just copy and paste it multiple times with the same content now all the paragraph i want to make the color as something let's say yellow so what we need to do we have to target this element now again another thing this is a p element so you can see that so you have to target with this name only you can't write something like that like paragraph all right so you have to target with p so that means we are targeting our p element and how many p elements we are having in this html doesn't matter all whatever style that we'll be writing here that will be applicable to all the paragraphs that we are having so for example let's say we'll do color as something let's make this one brown so that means we are targeting all the paragraph and if i now go back so all the paragraph is basically uh, targeted with the same style that we are having so this is all about the element selector now let's move on to next one and that is called the grouping selector now grouping is basically another very very important thing for example you are having h1 you are having span and you are having paragraph now let's say the requirement is that for each and every h1 span and paragraph the color has to be same and their their font size also has to be same let's say 20 pixel so then instead of writing something like this so you have written one for h1 one for span one for paragraph you can group all of this element at once and then you have to write the css or basically styling only one thing all right so it will be much more clean and also obviously time saving so let's i'll just comment out this one from here again comment out is control slash and then you will target h1 and to group you have to give comma so that means you are targeting all the h1 you are targeting span and you are also also targeting all the p's so that means you are grouping all of this element together and then i'll give the color as let's say uh, what we'll do something like 
this one i don't know what is the name let's use the same and then i'll give the font size uh, as 20 px let's save it and let's see what is happening all right so you can see that for each and every one the same color is getting applied and also the uh, font size will be same so if i now go here you can see this is font size 20 span also same paragraph is also same so you can see that you are basically grouping all of these and based on that you are styling uh, you are applying the styles all right so this is all about the grouping selector all right so now next we will be learning another two more uh, selector that is id and class and now this is also very very important now why is that so let's say you are uh, let's see this example only you are having this two h1 one of the h1 you want to give a color of red and another one you want to give a color of yellow so how you are going to do that so that means somehow you need to identify that okay this is the first h1 and then i want to target this h1 with a different style and for this h1 i want to target with a different styles now what you can do to make this one unique you can give a id or class to this h1 element and same for others also so let's start with first id so i'll give id so this will be let's say hello css so this is id all right now let's say you want to only target this h1 only and before that let me just remove all of these styles you don't need so i want to target this uh, h1 with this id hello css so i'll copy this and then to target a id you need to give this hash and then you have to basically give the id name so which is hello css so that means you are basically targeting this element so you can see the element with this id this element is basically automatically pick uh, from this html which is h1 and here i want to give this one as color as red if i now save this let's go back now notice only this is getting changed to red this is still black so now for this one also i want to give another id and this will be my hello html now i will target this one so i'll copy this and here i'll make this one as hello html and here i'll do color as yellow now let's save it now let's see so you can see that now this is getting applied to yellow and this is red now so this is all about the id selector that you can identify so what, what you need to do you have to give a unique id to this particular element and based on that you have to style it now let's say for both h1 you have to give a font size of 40 in that case what you can do now you can apply the concept of grouping so you can target this hello css and you can also target the hello html and you'll give a font size of 50 px all right so now we'll see if i save this now both are getting applied to 50 but because we need the color is different so that is the reason we don't have any option you have to give uh, two separate all right so this is all about the id now let's understand the concept of col uh, class selector so again let's say you are having so many paragraphs and only for this one two three four fifth for this fifth paragraph you want to give a different color and also different font size so what you can do you can give a class here and let's give this one name as fifth paragraph now to target this paragraph with this class name just like in id you have given has for to target a class name you have to give this dot and then you have to paste the class name that you have written now you'll see what it will do it will target the element with this class name and here i'll give a font size of let's say uh, 60px and i'll give a color of let's give some uh, different color which one will do we'll do deep pink all right so now let's save it and let's see what is happening awesome so now you can see only this paragraph is getting highlighted with a different style but all the others is taking the browser default style so this is all about the class selector so what you need to do you just have to give a class name to this particular element and then you have to target it with this dot so you have learned element selector grouping selector id selector class selector so this is all the basic selectors that we should know and after that obviously we'll be learning some more advanced selector also so that's all for this particular section let's move on to the next one all right so now let's start uh, with a journey with a css color so in this particular section we'll be discussing background color text color and border color and also we'll be uh, discussing some different types of color scheme that we generally use whenever we'll be developing any kind of application so the first thing is that 
uh, let's do one thing let's remove everything because we'll be doing each and everything from scratch so i'll just remove all of this and also from style we don't need anything so now i'll just take one h1 and i'll give this one as uh, css colors now with this simple example only we will be doing all of this see the reason why i am choosing very very simple so that it will be easy for understand and now let me explain you another thing that when you will do something when you are learning something for the first time if you are doing all of the things with very simple example at the end the concept will be exactly same so it doesn't matter whether your html is too much complex or it's a simple html the concept will be same in both the cases all right so that is the reason learn everything slowly and practice more so here we are having h1 now let's say i want to give a color now i think i don't have to explain this one you already know that text color is basically you will be able to change with so we'll take h1 and then you have to take color which will be red so to change the text color you have to use color property and this will be the value all right now here we are having multiple color scheme but the most uh, used that is one is hexadecimal or that you can say something like hex color and another one is rgb color scheme and rgba now start with the hex so hex how we basically write this hex color so let's say i want to make this color uh, convert this color to a hex color so first you have to start with has and now here generally in color scheme we are having three channel so if you see here rgb so this r means red channel green and then blue channel now for each and every channel the values differ from 0 to 255 so the values has to be between that similar for this hex color what you have to do so first let's explain with this rgb so that it will be easy to understand so let's say you want to uh, convert this one to rgb color so you have to take rgb see here we are having red green and blue so you'll do you have to give basically the values see here so it's automatically picking the red value right so here if you noticed the red value is highest which is 255 and then green is 0 blue is 0 that means that is the reason the green is highest uh, sorry red is highest if i go here noticed here red is 0 uh, the green is between so it's between like almost 50 percent 128 if i go here if you see blue one for blue one this will be highest and these two will be zero so here this two is zero and blue is 255 all right so now this is how it will work now you also will be able to give any value let's i'll give you a 22 i'll give here for example uh what we'll do we'll give 150 and i'll give here let's say 30 all right now this is a color now why this is a green now this is very easy to predict because here red value is very less blue value is very less and here green value is high but if i make this one let's say 220 so now this will be little bit bluish all right so you can see the reason is because now red value is highest so this is how this rgb scheme will work if i now save this obviously this getting will be uh, the color will be getting changed similarly for hex what we need to do so let me just comment it out so this is all about the rgb now for hex also it is almost same so for hex you have to take this has and then it it will be combination of both uh, colors and alphabets so it will be a b c d e f and then 0 to 9 all right so let's i'll give some random value for ff then i'll give 4 5 6 3 now you'll see that it will generate a color so again this is combination of like red uh, red uh, green and blue but here the values can be anything so if you change this value from let's say f a now see this color will be getting changed almost now if i change this one to let's say 8 3 and let's make this one as a now see see this is getting changed all right if i now save this so now this getting uh, this is getting changed so this is all about the hex color code now another thing that you will be able to use and that is called the rgb color with opacity now let's say you want to decrease or increase the intensity of this color that you are having so you have to use another fourth parameter which is the opacity so now let's i'll use a color and i'll do rgb i'll use the same one so here this one i'll use oh, sorry so i'll use here same and now i'll add a, another property which is rgba now this opacity will defer the values from 0 to 1 and here let's i'll give this one as so i'll give this one as 0 and let's see what is happening see now you are not able to see anything because the opacity is almost 0 if i give this one 0 0.2 it will be little bit visible see here 
so if i inspect and here let's i'll increase this on so 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 see this is getting changed right 0 0.1 this is very and if i give one here so this will be the highest one so this is another uh, um, opacity property that you can use so whatever we, what we have learned so far so you can use direct color like color is red green or you can use the hex or you can use rgb and also you can use rgb with opacity there is other like hsl but i think we no need to discuss all of this for now this is fine so this is all about the color property that we are having let's make this one as 0 0.8 or let's say 0 0.9 and now next is background color now background color i think we don't have to explain much because this is pretty simple what you need to do you have to use a background color and just pass a color here red now this will obviously take the background so you can see it is obviously taking the full width because this is a block element all right and nothing to explain here much so this is all about the background color and uh let's do another thing and that is the border let's give some different color it's looking very odd let's use this one okay now let's say i want to use some border color obviously we will be discussing border later uh, in this particular uh, video but for now let's see how we can use some border color so for border we have to give a border property and here you have to basically give that the radius how much you want to give the border so i'll give this one as let's say one px and now here you will be able to give some uh, like how you want to show the border whether it will be simple line or it will be dotted line something like that so i'll give this one as solid so this is all about the border if i now save this so you can see if you notice that the border is getting applied here now if you want to change the border color so you have to use the border color property and i'll make this one as red and if i now save this so you see now border color is getting changed to red here if you change something this one let's say i'll do something change here. if you notice that this is getting changed uh, let's make this one yellow i think it's not visible let's make this one little bit dark so that it will be visible so if you notice here now it is dark or basically black so this is all about the all the color scheme that you need to know so we have learned color or basically the text color that you will be able to use using color property then we are having background color and then we are having the border color all right so i think that's all for this particular color section let's move on to the next one all right so now let's understand some of the font uh, properties and some text uh, properties and also we'll be learning some spacing like letter spacing word spacing and line height so what i'll do let me just do one thing uh, i'll add some lot of content here let's save this all right and uh, what we can do uh, i think we don't need that much i'll remove some of this let's say till this one awesome now the first thing is that uh, i think font size we have already discussed uh, so to give font size we have to use font size property now here obviously you will be able to use different types of uh, for example like we currently we are using px and generally we use px i think that is fine to use but you can also use some others like rem em those things but that we'll be discussing later but let's say we'll start with this font size of uh, 40 px all right so let's see what is happening here uh, let's make this one a little bit big i will make 50 50 px all right now next another font property and that is font weight now here uh, these basically differ from you can see 100 to 900 so the less is means the intensity or basically weight of this font will be less if i give this one 100 and let's save it so if you notice here this is little bit less uh, the intensity is less but if i increase this one let's go here let's make this one 600 you can see the weight is increasing if i make 700 and the 900 is the highest and that is basically extra bold all right so this is highest now you can also use something like this you can also use here for example you can also use bold so you can see that it's now getting applied and also you can use bolder all right so this is another property font weight uh what else we are having we have font size font weight and also we have 
font style so font style is basically we are having normal so which is initial or normal is basically the default one or you will be able to basically change this one to let's say italic if i change i save it so this is getting changed all right so this is nothing but uh, changing the style of this particular font and these all the things are very very simple we don't have to explain all of this so this is three things we have learned so font size font weight font style now next is the text property or that means alignment so let's say your requirement is you have to make this one at the middle or you have to make this one on the right side how you are going to do that so to do this one you have to use our text align property this is uh we'll start with text now if you notice that there are so many with this text all right so we'll start with the first one which is text align and here you have to make this one center if i save it so you, now it is centered if i make this one end so it will be on the right side so let's make this one end it's on the right if you make this one start it will be at the start there are so many other if i now remove this i'll show you so you're having center and justify it will take the start left will be start right will be on the right side then you are having start and then some inner it initial these things most of the times you'll be using start or right or left only all right so this is all about our text align property now next thing three things we have to learn the first thing is we need to know letter spacing and then word spacing now as the word such as letter spacing means the spacing between the letters so these all the letters we are having right so the spacing between these things and word spacing means spacing between these words so now let's give something so i'll give here letter spacing i uh, will give 10 px let's save it let's see what is happening so if you notice here there is a space between this and if i increase this one this will also increasing so that means this is the spacing between each and every letter uh, let's make this one little bit less we'll do 10 px all right now next we are having word spacing so let's make this one 20 px and let's see what is happening i now save this if you noticed here there is a spacing between this each and every word now so i'll increase this one so it's increasing all right so that means this is the spacing between the word so how many things you have learned so we have learned font size font weight to increase the intensity and or decrease then font style text align letter spacing and word spacing now next thing we'll do another thing and that is uh, let me just comment out some of the things or else it will be confusing so we'll remove all of these and also we don't need font style now let's go here and let's add some more sorry uh, we'll add little bit more so we'll do here let's save it all right so now you can see that we are having some more content now i want to give line height or spacing between this each and every line vertically so for this one what you need to do uh, we have to give this line height property so let's give this one as 50 px if i now save this if you noticed here there is a change so if i increase this is getting increased right if you noticed here now you can also give this one in pixel but one thing very important if you don't give any uh, like pixel or something like that if you just give some value like one or two what will do it will basically multiply with the current font size so for example if i give two here see this is now getting increased and if you go to the computed and here basically you'll be able to see sorry not here so if i let's go to ah sorry here so you can see that we are having 100 px correct so this is multiplying because current height is 50 sorry current font size is 50 px and you haven't given anything in the line height so what it is doing it is multiplying if i do like 1.5 now see it should be 75 75 px see now it's 75 px so what you can do you can give this one as a pixel so let's say 10 px see how it is looking but also you can give in rem so let's say uh, one rem let's make this one two three four five something like that all right so now it will be basically taking based on that only so now it is taking 80 px because one rem it is taking as 16 px all right so this is all about the line height so that means what what are the things that you have learned we have learned all the 
text related things text align letter spacing word spacing and also the line height so that's all for this particular section now let's move on to the next one all right everyone so now in this section we'll be learning how we can style uh, links and also some of the pseudo classes so let's go here and let's create some of the links so i'll start with first link so this is link one let's copy this and this will be two three four and five for each and every one will we'll give hrf let's give uh, youtube only so copy this paste it here all right all right let's go here and first we'll do uh, what we can do so we'll do a font size of uh, 20px all right let's see how this is looking all right so we're having link one link two three four and five the first thing is you'll notice that obviously whatever uh, properties that we have learned so far for example see i'm not repeating these things again and again let's say you want to give a font size here that we have already given you want to give a color here so the color property we have already discussed so if you want to give a color you'll be able to easily give that so color is red so all will be changed to red if you give a background color of green so all will be background color is green all right so that is the reason i'll not be discussing all of this so one thing you'll notice that we are having this underline here now what is this property called now this is called as text decoration now if you go here by default this text decoration is basically underlined here all right how will we be able to see that if i go here and inspect uh, let's go here so text decoration is underlined so to remove this one what we need to do we have to make this one as none so you don't want to give any text decoration see now we don't have any uh, link there uh, or oh, sorry not link underline there all right so this is all about the very basic style that we need now obviously other whatever styles that we have learned so our properties that we will be able to apply here but let's learn some of the pseudo classes but although we'll be discussing all of this later uh, the first thing that are some pseudo classes is basically some pseudo state special state for a particular element so you see here on the right side we are having this hover on click of this here we are having some of the force element state so these all are the special state for example when this is active when this is focus focus within hover and visited so let's start with the hover one hover is basically means when you are hovering here see whenever i'm hovering you will notice here what is happening see when i'm hovering here obviously it's not coming here if you noticed here on hover webkit ld uh, webkit and a link cursor is changing to pointer so this is the reason whenever i'm going going and now here it is changing to pointer now let's say what i want to do whenever i'll be hovering i want to change the color from this uh, color to a different color first let's give a different color here so we'll do a color let's do this one i usually change from here so that it will look good that's it all right now i want to change on hover how we are going to target a pseudo class or basically a particular state so to do that we have to use this colon and after this there is no space okay so you have to type hover so you can see that this is now hover now this will basically target all the elements with this hover state and here what i want to do i want to make a color of let's i'll do yellow and then i'll again change this one to a different color so let's make this one something like this all right and also let's change uh, let's make this one a little bit bigger so now let's save it and let's see what is happening okay i'll refresh this first now i will just hover see now this is getting changed correct if i click here hover on hover we are having this color see these all are getting changed right phrase this so this all are getting changed all right so we have understood how we can do a hover style so let's do an one more so let's do a focus so we'll do a focus so again the same thing and here i'll do a let's say color i'll do a green color and let's change something let's do this one all right and also let's do one thing let's remove this 
this youtube.com that we are having we'll replace this one with has so now let's see what will happen if i now save this uh, now let's refresh this and i'll click on this focus and you see that we are already getting that when we'll be focusing this color will be getting changed so now let me just remove this one from here so i'll click here now you can see the color is getting changed but if i do hover then we are getting the hover color so this is all about the pseudo state that you will be able to manage using these pseudo classes all right so i think for now i think this will be more than enough the one very important thing that you need to know and that is this text decoration because i'm pretty sure that whenever you'll be creating any real life project you need to use this text decoration property most of the times in any link so that's all about the link now in the next part we'll be learning how we can style list so let's do that in the next section all right so let's see how we are going to style list so let's quickly create one so i'll create one unordered list and here i'll be having some list item one then we are having two and three all right now this will be pretty simple and very short so now let's say what we want to do the first thing is that you can see that we are having this list style type so this is the property name and i want to hide this one so how we are going to do that so to do this one what you need to do we have to target this evil so let's give a id so this will be our let's say use a list item wrapper now let's copy this and now here i'll just pass here list style type you can see now you'll see so many options that you are basically getting here now whatever uh, that will be giving let's say i'll give here circle so it will be basically changed to circle if i do something else let's say um, this one let's see what is happening so abc it's coming and if i want to hide this one i'll make this one as none so now you see you don't have that uh, circle thing now most of the times you need these options only because whenever you'll be doing any project so you have the requirement that you have to hide these options all right now let's say you want to give some custom value here so that also you will be able to give how we can do that so let's say you have to give this quote and inside this you'll be able to pass anything let's say i'll pass this one and let's see what is happening see now you're getting this custom value here all right if i give star this will be getting applied here so this is one very important point but most of the times uh, you see that if i now hover here in this evil you'll see there will be some margin and padding is getting applied so this you can see this green is basically padding and the this uh, orange one is actually margin but the reason why we are not discussing this one because we will be discussing these things in details when we'll be starting our box model uh, section so for now i just want to quickly show you this thing that how we'll be basically able to hide or customize this list style tag so that's all for this particular section let's move on to the next one all right so now we will be learning some of the selectors so first uh, we'll start with uh, one very important and that is called the universal selector so for this one what we can do let's do one thing i think let's keep this evil here only even uh, evil and li let's add some more here so i'll add a h1 tag uh, let's do hello then i'll add a paragraph here then i'll add an anchor link and let's give a href of has now let's say what you need to do for all the other elements that you are having different different elements here for example you are having a evil then h1 and p and anchor and you have to make all of this color as red so how you are going to basically do that so to target each and every element inside your body tag or basically in the html that whatever you are having we basically have to target the universal selector and that will denote that universal selector you have to denote with this star now this star is basically telling that okay whatever element that you are using it will basically apply the style to all the elements for example if i now if i now save it i think we are getting all of this let's will change this color to something so we'll change this one to aqua if i now save it now let's see what is happening now notice all of these are getting changed to aqua if i change uh, this one to something else let's say let's change to this one and let's save it so you can see that all of these are getting changed to that similarly goes now this will not 
applicable for color whatever styles that you will be applying here each and every one will be for example let's i'll do text decoration as underline in everywhere if i now save it let's see what is happening see all of those are actually now text decorated as underline same goes for if i give font size of 30 px and each and every one will be now font size of 30 px so to target each and every element inside your html tag we have to use the universal select selectors now this is a very important because whenever you will be creating any now obviously we'll be creating later in this video only sometimes this can be very very helpful because uh, sometimes what we need to do we have to basically make the margin and padding of this each page uh, for this current page as zero so in that case instead of writing margin and padding as zero for each and every element what you, we usually basically do will take a universal selector and then we'll simply make the margin as zero and padding as zero if i now save it now see all of this for each and every element we don't have any margin and padding so this is one of the very important uh, selector that you should know and this is called the universal selector now let's move on to the next one all right so now let's understand another uh, important selector and that is attribute selector so what basically is that so universal selector is basically targeting all the elements that you are having in the html attribute is basically to target a specific element using an special attribute so let's see how this will work with an example uh, what we can do let's do one thing let's take input here and for this one i'll make a type equal to text i'll copy this uh, paste it five times let's make this one email and i'll make this one password checkbox and date all right so now let's say we want to target this input with this type of email and we want to make the background color or let's make the border color as something different so how we are going to target this input with this attribute type so this is an attribute right for this particular input so here this attribute selector comes into picture so the first what i'm going to do let's target all the inputs so i'll go here uh, let's comment this one for now and i'll target all the input and for each and every input i'll make the border as 1px we'll do solid and we'll do some color this one now let's save it i think it's not that much visible let's do one thing and make this one 2px and we'll use some different color so we'll do this one let's see okay so now you can see that all the inputs are having the same border color because here we are targeting all the inputs now what you need to do you have to target only this particular input with this type email and let's say you need to make this on some bluish color not a yellow color so to target with a special attribute what you need to do you have to take the input and then you have to take this square bracket and here basically you need to mention that by which attribute you want to target so here we are having this type so i want to target if the type is equal to equal to email then only i want to do something so here you need to do if type is equal to equal to email so i'll make the border as 2px solid and let's first take red and i'll change this one later let me just do something like this one all right now let's see what will happen so here we are only targeting with the email now notice the email one is basically getting changed if you want to make it let's make let's add some placeholder we'll do email now let's see see all of this are having yellow color but only for email it is getting changed similarly let's see if you want to change this one for password so let's see how this will work i hope now you will be able to do it so we'll make this one as password and here we need to go now we'll do input then you need to do type is equal to equal to password then only i'll do a border color so here i think we can also directly take border color and let's make some different color here this one let's save it and let's see what is happening now see so this password is now getting changed to that color that you have given so this is how you need to target a particular attribute and you have to style it let's uh, do something else so you can see that we are having this link let me just cut it from here and i'll paste it here and i'll uh, give this one as link one then we'll do link two and three now uh, for 
this one will give this one as link one we'll do this one as link two and this one i'll give some random value all right random value now first let's say what i want to do whatever links we are having in this page i want to target all the links that are having this href as link so link is common between so you can see that here we are having one and two so how we will be basically targeting this so the first thing is that if i now go here and target all the a and then let's make the font size as 60 px so this will automatically change in all anchors correct but i want to target only those links those are having this link in common in the href so that means this href is a proper uh, attribute that you need to target so to target this one what you need to do basically first you have to do anchor and then we'll do href is equal to equal to link and let's make this one as font size as 100 px now will that work now you can basically pause this video and try to uh, try to guess so if i now go here you can see that nothing is getting changed the reason is because this is checking exact link is there or not but here you can see we are having link one and then this has so to basically tell that if there are link in anywhere of this href so how we can basically do that so you have to give this star here so that means we were checking we are basically checking if there is a href which consists of this link then only i want to make this font size as 100 if i go here now you can see that this is getting changed similarly if i now make this one to random so here we are having this random right so let's make this one as random and if i save this now see what will happen so this is now getting increased these two are of the default which is 60 px so this is another very important attribute uh, sorry attribute selector that you should know so how you will be basically targeting a particular element with a special attribute and this is how you need to do that so this is all about this particular section let's move on to the next one all right everyone so let's learn another selector that is called the descendant and the child selector so what basically is that so let's first understand with the example so let's say we are having a div and let's give this one name uh, sorry let's give a class name uh, sorry id of parent div all right and inside this we are having some paragraph so this will be paragraph one and let's copy this so this will be paragraph two and three now what do you want to do let's say outside also outside this div i am talking so we are having some more paragraph so you're having four five and six now let's say what will happen i think we have already discussed that if i now type here p and let's make a font size of 60 px font weight of bold and also we'll do color as something like uh, orange what will happen this will apply in all the paragraphs so you can see that we are having this before there is a paragraph and all the other paragraphs because we are targeting all the p elements inside this html but what happen if i only want to target all the paragraphs inside this div only that means there has to be some relationship between this parent div and the child's all right so here actually this descendant selector comes into picture so i only want to target all the divs all the paragraphs inside this div only now one way of doing is that and that is obviously the best way to target this div with this id because this will be unique currently we have only one div in this whole html element so what we can do if i now simply add uh, here a div and then give space that means i'm telling that okay go to any div and then see if there is a p or not if there is a p then only you apply these styles if i now go back see now this style is getting changed only in this three rest it is not getting applied i hope you are getting so that means i am targeting this div here and then inside this but let's say what will happen if i now copy this paste this uh, paste this one again here and let's give 10 20 and 30 and this is parent div 2 if i now save this now see here also this is getting applied so that means if there are multiple divs obviously we are not specifying anything here so that is the reason it's always best practice to always target with id so now i only want to target with this id so what we need to do i think we already discussed that when we we'll write using id we have to give hash for class it will be dot so now what i am telling that okay now you go to this id of this element and then you target all the piece 
now what will happen if i now go back see now these three are only getting applied but if i now want to target with this parent div 2 so again i have to copy this and let's say i'll target this one here and then i'll do p and i'll make a font size of 100 px font uh, let's uh, make a text decoration of underline now see what will happen if i now go back okay so now you can see that this is getting applied this is basically the second parent div and this is the first one but what is what i'm trying to basically say so if you want to target the children so you have to target the parent and then you have to basically target all the descendant so this is one all right so now let's see another scenario so what will happen okay now for this particular div this parent div we are having let's say we are having a span and this is a parent span now so this is inside this div now there is another span inside this paragraph so this is child span all right i want to target let's say this span here so just now we have basically learned that okay i'll do parent div and then i'll target span and i'll make the font size as 30 px and i'll do a, some different color for example let's change it from here some blue color i want to do if you now save this and let's go back now if you noticed here what is happening if i now inspect so we'll go to parent span so you can see that the color is getting applied we'll go to child span the same color is getting applied so that means with this descendant one it doesn't matter whether there is a span inside this child only it will target all the span but let's say your scenario is that you don't want to target this span here you only want to target the immediate children or basically this span here so in that case what you need to do you have to make this one convert this one to a child selector and to do that you have to use this greater than so that means now if i hover here so you see notice this one very carefully that it's targeting this element then it checking all the immediate children so that means the immediate children here is only one span if i now save this now see the child span is taking a different uh, style here but the parent one is only getting changed to the one that we have done so that means this is the difference between the child one and the descendant so descendant will basically check here if you see it will check all the spans you notice there three dot here so it's checking all the span but when you will give greater than it is checking the immediate span all right so this is all about this descendant and child selector and this is very very important i'm pretty sure you will be using most of the times the reason is because there will be so much scenario you have to target some specific elements so in that case this will be extremely helpful all right now uh, let's uh, understand another one so let's say i'll have a div here and i'll give some value here let's say hello world all right and there is a class uh, hello world all right now let's copy this i'll paste it here i'll give some random class and this is some random text now i want to basically target this div now obviously if you want you can target this one with dot hello world so obviously this will work because this will check the way which element has the class name hello world but there is another one that you can use and that is that because this is in this div element so you can basically tell here that okay there is a div with dot hello world class name so this is also the same thing so now what will happen it will see if you notice that it's direct checking that div having a class name of hello world and now here if you want whatever style you want to do let's say tpx if I go back and notice that this is getting now changed all right now same goes for this also so if you want to target this one you have to do div dot hello random class and then you have to give let's say font size of 200 px save this so this is now getting changed all right so this is all about all the selectors that we should know so you have learned universal attribute selector descendant child selectors and also previously we have done the grouping selectors and element uh, selector also and i think this will be more than enough now let's move on to the next one the next section we'll be learning box model some border styling padding uh, margin width display overflow 
and then after that we will be moving to flexbox and grid and so these all are the theory part and at the end we'll be creating some projects and that will be it so there are a lot of things to do so let's start or let's move on to the next section all right everyone so let's learn another very very important concept in CSN and that is called the box model now we will be learning everything uh, practically so but uh, let me give you some of the very basic ideas so each and every element in HTML we can basically represent using this box model which at the end consists of this you can see that it start with this content so content is basically the width and height of that element then it will have the padding now very very important thing padding will be inside actually it will not be the outside of the element so after content will be having padding then we are having the border and then at the end we are having the margin which will be the outside of the box model all right you can see that this is the content of the box where the text or images will appear and you can see that this basically clears an area around the content very very important and for margin it clears the area outside of the border all right so margin will always be outside and border will be actually goes around around basically the padding and the content so now let's see how this will work for example we can basically check the same thing using any element we are having here let's understand with this uh this h1 that we are having now if you scroll up see that box model that we are having so this is called the box model now here if i just whenever i'll hover you'll see that this will be basically reflected here so i'll hover on this element so this is the element so this is basically the width and the height of this h1 as i already told you so this is basically the content and then we are having the padding outside of it now this is not outside this is actually inside the padding is basically the part of this element so here we don't have any padding so that's the reason it's not showing but what will happen if I just go here and add a padding of 10 px now if I just go there and now if you see go to padding so you can see that from all the sides it's showing 10 so that means we are having a top which is called padding top 10 px padding right 10 px padding bottom 10 px and padding left 10 px all right and this is the content padding then we are having border obviously we don't have any border but let's add a border of 2px solid red now see so we are having content then we are having padding then we are having the border so this is now the border and outside we are having the margin and this is the default margin if i now change this margin let's say let's add margin of 20px now this will automatically change so now you can see that the margin is now 20 this is 20 bottom 20 left 20 so this box model is basically consist of the content then padding then border and outside of it will having the margin now margin is basically to differentiate this item with a different item for example you are having this list here and you want to give some space outside of it so in that case you have to give margin but here if you see inside of it or basically around the content you don't have to give margin you have to give padding so that it will give you some extra spaces on the uh, four of the or basically in the four side top bottom right and left so this is about the box model now let's understand some of the very basic thing and now i don't think i have to spend much time because this will be very much boring i think we already discussed this padding and margin but let's give you some other things so padding is basically consist of so here we have given this padding 10 px so 10 px is means it is same for all the sites but let's say we have to give different padding in all the sites so here if i now expand this you'll see that we are having padding top so top will be first then we are having right then bottom and then left so it will be so let's say i want to give a top of 10 px then you have to give a space and let's say you want to give a right of 30 px so after top it will be right so we'll give 30 px so now it's a right of 30 px now space it will take bottom so let's say i want to give a bottom of 20 px so now bottom is 20 and left of 40 px all right so now you'll see what will happen if i want to expand this so we're having padding top of 10 padding right of 30 padding bottom of 20 and padding left of 40 px so that means based on this for whatever you want to give you can give the padding if you don't give anything let's say what will happen if i only give 10 and 20 now this means this will take the padding top as 10 padding bottom as 10 all right and if you give uh, here only 30 so padding right will be 30 and padding left will be 30 if you give 2 that means it will take the same as top and bottom first one and the second one will be right and left now if you want you can also give separate padding let's say i want to give only padding top so i'll do padding and then i'll do top 
and let's say give a 40 px so it will be padding top then i want to give padding bottom of 50 px so it will be 50 then i'll give a padding left of 20 px and i want to give a padding right of 40 px so like that also you can give so you can see these things will be applied here so it's up to you let's say you have requirement you only have to give padding top so you can use this padding top here or you can also use the same using padding so for example if i do now remove all of this let's say you have to give a padding top of 0 px again the same thing padding right of 20 px padding uh, bottom of 10 px and padding left of 0 px so this will also work this is if you notice here whatever we've written here this is similar to this one only all right so this is all about the padding now next uh, let's understand some of the border so i think border we have already discussed some of the things the border color and uh, border width so let's give a border width of 10 px now see that we are having border width means this will basically the width of this border when i increase or decrease this will obviously decrease next we are having the border style so we are having border style and you'll see if i now change this one so we have given the solid right most of the time but if you want to give you can give different also for example let's say you want to give dashed so you see this style will basically change hidden this is none that means you don't want to show it then we are having solid most of the times you'll use solid or none or like double dotted or dashed so this is all about border style then we are having border radius that means the round if you want to make this one round so let's i'll do border radius of 10 px see now uh, this will be rounded all right so based on that you want to basically change this one whatever you want to give here all right this will automatically change next we are basically having the uh, border top style also you can give let's say you want to only give border top color so you will be able to change this one then we are having border top left radius right radius i'm not discussing all of this now each and everything you can do similarly like border top you can do then you can do border bottom you can see border bottom color border bottom left radius right radius similarly you can do border left and also you can do border right something like that now you have to basically practice all of this or else it will be very very you can't memorize all of this you have to basically implement this one in a real application so this is all about border now next we'll come to margin now again the margin is also the same concept exactly same as padding if i now expand this one you'll see that we are having margin top right bottom and left similarly now let's say you want to change this one so i'll give a top of 20 uh, right of 30 uh, bottom of 25 px and left of 40 px and again based on this this will automatically getting applied so if i now expand these all are updated if you want to give you can also give margin separately so i'll not discuss this one in detail so you're having you can see we're having margin top so margin top then we are having margin right margin left and we are having margin bottom so if you want to give separate that also you can do so whatever we have learned so we have learned that uh, what basically is box model so this is a very important interview questions that uh, box model is consist of what and uh, then we've learned padding we have learned a margin and also have learned border now in the next one we'll be learning a very simple theory of width and height and also the display property like display none and block how we will be basically able to hide and show a particular element using the display property so let's do that in the next section all right everyone so now i think we have good understanding of box model and padding margin and border so let's uh, discuss uh, about width height and mean width and mean height so what i'm going to do uh, let's do one thing let's create a div here so i'll create a div and i'll give this one as width and height now here now i think we already have discussed all of this so let's give a class name of width uh, let's give a class name of box i'll go here and in this box we'll give the following property so you're using class so we'll give a padding of 10 px we'll give a border of 2 px solid red let's save it and let's see what is happening first so you can see that we are having this width and height here and let's make this one on the top so we'll just cut it from here and we'll do it at the first okay so now uh, and also let's give a margin here so we'll give a margin of uh, top 10px 20px right 
bottom 10 bx and right left 20 bx all right if i go here so you can see that these all the box model are uh, these uh, styles are getting applied now what is basically width and height now by default you can see that the width for this particular box is taking 100 percent width and the height is basically taking so if you notice here here if i scroll down uh, sorry if i scroll here uh, why i'm calling scroll if i hover here you can see that we are getting this deep dot box there is a kind of a pop-up is coming and there you can see the width is 934.4 and height is 41.6 so what is happening it's basically adding the uh, padding of top and bottom and then also it's adding the current height of this particular element that the text that we are having here now we basically will be able to manage the height and width using our width and height property so let's I'll give a width here so I'll give a width of 200 px now let's see what will happen so now you can see that it's taking a width of 200 px only obviously it's taking 223 the reason is it's adding the uh, adding the pad, uh, padding of the left and right but how we are going to able to fix that so we have to basically give this one as box sizing as border box if i now save this one now let's see what will happen so now if you see it will be 200 only the width is 200 so padding it's basically adjust adjusting with the inner uh, text width that is required so that means we are basically telling that i want this one uh, the width to be exact 200 so that is the reason we are adding this box sizing so it's basically specify the behavior of the width and height properties but that is a different thing and that is a very important thing that if you want to uh, why you basically use this box sizing property as border box so this will be your answer so now here the width we have given this one as 200 px now you also will be able to give this one in percentage also let's i'll give this one 50 percent so it will basically calculate the uh, width of this current resolution that we are currently seeing and it will basically take the 50 percent of it so if i know expand this one you see the width will basically uh, adjust because it's in percentage all right i hope you are getting but if i give this one in uh, pixel so it will be always fixed so this is 200 now you see this is not getting increase or decrease so this is about the width now next we are having the height now height again you can basically give this one in pixel so i'll give this one as a 200 px and basically based on that it will automatically increase so now the height is also 200 and width is also 200 now this is all about this very simple concept of width and height uh, what is basically mean height and mean uh, mean uh, mean height mean width max height and max width the max width is basically you are telling this browser that okay I want this box to be maximum width of 500 px so it has to be maximum of 500 px it can be less than that but it can't be more than that let's see how this will work all right so now in this box i'll give a max width of 300 px now let's see this is a very interesting thing now see here currently max width is 300 px here we are having width which is 200 px so we are having both width and max set so which one it will take because currently the uh, width is less than max width so it will obviously take the 200 all right if I now uh, increase this one to sorry what I'm doing uh, if I increase the width so you can see that it's getting increased the point it will exceed the 300 px because we have given the max width so max width means it can't be more than 300 px so it has to be less than that or it can be equal to if you give here let's say more than 300 so now see 90 now notice here so 300 now if I increase see it's not getting increased even if you give this one as 600 px it will be max 300 px only the point uh, the point i will just remove this max width now it is getting 600 px so this is a very important thing that if you are using both width and max width max width always be uh, the final width it will take if the width is less than that then it is well and enough but if it is the width is more than that so in that case the it's 600 but your max width is 300 it will always take the 300 px same goes for height also let's say we are having height of 300 and i'll give a max height of 300 px now let's save it so now we are having height of three uh, 200 so i'll increase this one it will increase now the point i'll go to 300 so here now if you increase so it's not getting increased 
right because the max height we have given as 300 if i remove this one then it will again take the one that you have given here so this is the very basic concept of width height max width and max height now next thing what we need to do we have to also learn another property that is a very very important property that is called display so by default each and every element that you are seeing if you notice here we are getting displays block displays block is basically a kind of uh, it's basically a proper value of this display now display can be so many other things like it can be inline inline block flex that things we are going to discuss but by default it is block now let's see you want to hide this box from the browser how you can do that so you have to basically have this property that is called the display and here you can see that a lot of uh, display we are having but if you want to hide this one so you have to add a display of none if i save this one now you're not able to see this one correct because the display is none if i want to remove this one again this is visible so this is another property that you can use all right awesome so i think now we have almost covered the most of the very basic thing now in the next section we'll be discussing some more properties and after that we'll be start uh, learning the flex bo flex box and uh, grid so let's uh, do that in the next section all right everyone so let's uh, start uh, learning the uh, some of the concept of css background so now one of the property that we have already learned and that is the background color so the first thing is that what we are going to do we'll be basically learning how we will be basically linked to a background image and then after that we'll be learning some of the other concepts that we can apply so for that first i'll create a div and i'll give some uh, random text here and let's give a class name of card here now let's go to our css and then i'll just uh, style this one so we'll give a width of 500 px and we'll give a height of 500 px and then uh, we'll also give a padding of let's say 5 px and we'll give a margin of 10 px we'll give a border of 1 px solid red let's save this all right all right so now here let's say we need to give some background image inside this div and let's see how we are going to do this one using css so for this one i'll give another property here and you can see that we have to give this background image now here we basically have to tell that uh, whether we want to use a local image or an image from uh, the google like you can directly pass url also so let's say i want to use a url now here you need to basically pass the path name that from where you want to take the image so you can see that i have some two image here let me rename this one so i'll give this one sangam2 okay so you can see that i have this one and then two these two image so i want to use uh, this image here so what we need to do again we have to basically go to this path here local path and inside this we have to find that which image we want to use so i'll go here image then slash let's say this image i want to use if i now save this now let's see what is happening all right so you can see that we are getting the image here now notice obviously you're not able to see all the image that is fine for that we will be learning all the properties later but in this part the main objective is that we you need to learn that how we can link to a particular image so this is how you need to do you have to use the url and then you can basically pass the path another thing very important you can also pass multiple images also so let's say you want to use two images so what you need to do in that case you have to give comma and then you have to again use another url so now let's say i want to use the second image let me just format this one so now let's save it now obviously you're not able to see the second image but it is actually coming here how you can basically check that so let's see if i now remove this one from here now let's see what is happening see so this image is already there all right so this is another very important thing that how you will be able to use two images again if i do the second one let's see what is happening here i'll just use this one let's see i think we'll not be able to see because of uh, i think both are overlapping but that is fine this is how you need to use multiple images so this is one of the uh, very important concept that how you can pass a background image using the url uh, uh, this url concept now in the next section we'll be learning another uh, very important property in this background concept only and that is called the background repeat so let's learn that property all right so we have learned that how we can use uh, images using this url property here and we can also basically pass multiple images now let's uh, understand another very important concept so for this one what i'm going to do first i'll just remove this one from here 
and I'm going to use the second image only so I'll go to this image now what I'm going to do I'll make some changes so first I'll do this one as 100% width I remove the padding I remove the margin and also let's make this one as uh, how much you can do? we'll do 1000 px save it now you see what is happening here if you notice carefully this image is getting repeated uh, repeated multiple times the reason is because the dimension of this image is very small but the screen size is large so it's try to fit with multiple image here automatically let's see if i try to make this one let's say 2000 px now I'll see what will happen see this image is coming multiple time so how we are going to basically change this uh, one so here actually there is a property that you can use and that is called background repeat so what basically this will do this obviously will give you so many properties like inherit means the default one then we have initial repeat if you want to repeat this one round space repeat with x or y axis something like that here if we do no repeat that means we don't want to repeat this image now see what is happening here so this image is coming only one time all right so this is the exact dimension of this particular image so this is another very very useful let's say i'll give you one example uh you are like this this will be a good example only let's say you're having very small dimension image something like this and then you're trying to use this one in a large container if you try to use this one using this background image property i'm pretty much sure you'll get multiple instance of this image so in that case you have to basically use this background repeat uh, property all right so this is another property now let's move on to the next section now what you see what i'm trying to do i'm just giving you a very very small idea of all the properties in css so that whenever you will be creating or you will be creating any project it will be easy for you to implement or basically apply these concepts in a real life project all right so let's move on to the next section so till now we have learned total three properties related to background one is background color i think we don't have to explain this one let's add this one here i think you will already know so let's try to add this one so i think this will apply here this is all about the background color then we learn background image and then background repeat now let's understand another uh, property and that is called background position so let's say in this container this image that you are using here you want to position this image now there are so many things that you can do uh, so here one of the properties that we can basically manage so for that you have to use this background position now here you can see that you can give this one with percentage this will work but let's say we want to make this image on the right side and on the top so what we need to do we have to basically give this one okay i want to make this one right and it should be on the top now let's say if i now save this what will happen so you can see that now it's going to the right top similarly there are multiple properties that you can use or value not property i will say so let's say i want to make this one right and then do center now it's in the center you can see then you can do right bottom so it will be on the right side but it will be on the bottom similarly you can do left bottom so it will be on the left bottom then we are having left center and then the default which is left top it was in the initially so like most of the times you will not this property but it's always better to know these things so this is all about you can also give this one in a percentage you can basically see the official documentation also so here if i now try to go right so we'll get all the information basically that what you can do so you can see that we can do top left center then you can give percentage also like so many things you have to basically experiment with all of this all right so this is another very important uh, property that we have learned now let's move on to the next one all right so let's learn another uh, property related to background and that is called the background attachment so first i'll just write this one so this will be background attachment now you can see that we are having some properties like fixed local scroll most of the times you'll either use this scroll or it will be fixed now fix means the background will be always fixed you can see i'm scrolling but this background is always fixed all right and the difference for scroll will be like that image will basically automatically scroll when you will do the page scroll all right so this is the difference but when we'll do the fixed it will be always fixed all right so this is one thing now second uh, and the last thing that i want to do and that is called the background shortcut let's say we have learned all of this right and you want to 
use all of this in only one single property so for that what we need to do we have to basically use the css background property let me just check it once sorry yeah so we have background shorthand and you can see that this will be the uh, flow so first you have to take the background color so let's say i will take here something like this will do so we'll go here so we'll take background so here we'll be having the color so first uh, we have used let's say red then you have to basically give the background image so it will be url and then the image that i want to let's say i want to use this image then it will be background repeat so this property so it will be no repeat then it will be background attachment so let's say i want to make this one fixed and at the end it will be the poison so let's say i want to make this one right top so this will be the all the things at once now i'll just commit it out from here let's save this and let's see what is happening see background is fixed it's on the right and top the image is coming and if i scroll this image is fixed and also this is no repeat if i now make this one let's say repeat let's see what is happening see the image is repeating if i make this one scroll this will be now scrollable all right now if you are missing any of the property here that doesn't matter it will still work all right so what i'm trying to say let's say um, i'll just remove all of this correct and save this so see the image will not come but the background color is coming similarly if i now let's say give this one uh, i'll remove this from here and i'll me i'll remove all of this also so that means we are have only given the image so image should come so image is coming here and you can also make this one no repeat so this will come all right so this is all about the background related property that this is very very helpful now you'll be using most of the times all of this so we've learned background color background image background repeat position and attachment all right so that's all for this background section now let's move on to the next one all right everyone so let's understand another very 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 important concept and you will get so many questions in interview also from this section and that is the css position now actually in css we have different types of position for example position static relative absolute fixed and sticky so we'll be learning all of this one by one so the first thing what i want you to know is that each and every element that you basically see that will be position static by default all right so that means let's say this element that we are having here so for example this is h1 so this is a position static now there are some speciality why i'm telling because this is very important so there are some properties that using those properties you will be basically manipulate any css uh, any html element so if your element that currently that you are using for example this one if uh, if here actually there is no position is specified that means this is a position static by default you can't apply those properties to this particular element for example the properties i am talking about top bottom left right and z index or z index for example let's say if i try to apply here top of 100 px you'll see that this will not work so the position is static property prevents the top from having an effect so you have to basically try setting any other position similar or something other than static that means each and every element that you are currently seeing that will be position static by default now let's start with uh, the first one which will uh, learn what is position relative so position relative is basically the position will be relative there is no more definitive answer so we'll learn all of this by seeing some particular example so what i'm going to do i'll create uh, one div or let's create three divs here so let's say this will be item one then uh, this will be item two sorry item two and three now uh, let's give a class name so here i'll give this one as item one i'll copy this item two and this will be item three all right now uh, first uh, what we'll do uh, we'll take these three so we'll take item one comma item two so we are using grouping selector item three and let's give a width of 100 percent height of 50 px 
background color of red padding of 5 px let's see how this is looking all right and also will give some margin top of 10 px let's keep 20 px all right so now we are getting three element and let's give uh, some color and font size so we'll give a color of white and we'll give a font size of 18 px all right so now you'll notice here okay we are getting some that is fine uh, each and every element currently is static now what will happen if i try to give this item to position relative so what we need to do we have to take item 2 and this the property name this will be position and you can see it's coming as relative so now because we have applied all uh, the position relative to this item to div that means all the properties that i'm talking about like top left bottom z, uh, z index all of this you will be able to apply in this item too let's see what will happen if i give a top of 50 px let's save it now let's see item 2 is actually here you are not able to see item 3 because it's overlapping because of the uh, because of that z index all right so now here let's i'll make this one as let's do 80 px or let's do 100 okay now you are able to see item 3 and item 2 here all right so that means and also you'll be able to give left so let's give a left of 60 px so it's now on the left so you can see that so because of this position relative this you are able to apply what will happen if i just remove this one see and not able to basically it, it is not taking all of these properties here so that means whenever you are giving this position relative now this is basically now the position will be relative for this particular element and whatever you want to do you will be basically able to change using those properties same goes for item one also if i let's item one we'll do position relative and let's give a top of 300 px let's save this so now it's taking also you will be able to give uh, this top left right and bottom all of this in minus also so what will happen if i give this one in minus 100 px so now see item 2 is basically here all right so this is all about position relative now next we need to know another very very important uh, position that is called the position absolute so what basically position absolute is whenever you'll give an item position absolute it will be always absolute to its nearest parent if the parent is of position relative if the parent is not position relative so it will take the browser as its parent or basically the root parent and it will be absolute based on the root element all right so let's see how this will work or else this will be very very difficult to understand so what i'm going to do here first let's me just remove all of this and then uh, inside this we are having this div here so i'll remove this uh, or let's skip this item too i'll take another span here and this will be child of item 2 now learn this one very carefully because this is very very important concept you need to use most of the times what will happen now so we are having this child of item 2 and here uh, let's give some class name or what we can do we'll target uh, span and we'll give a background of let's say green let's see what is happening so we are getting this child here now what will happen because so you'll think that okay this span is inside this item 2 which is the parent but this item 2 is currently not a position relative so that means this is of position static if i now try to give your position absolute in this span what will happen nothing is happening here all right but now what will happen if i give some of the top right left properties so see if i now go here and let's give a top of zero now let's save this and let's see what is happening see now it's starting from the top of this page it's not inside this div but logically this in html structure this is inside of this particular div so that means because this item 2 is not a position relative it is now position static so now it's basically taking this browser as its parent so that is the reason starting from the top let's see if i give here top of uh, 10px 
so same thing will happen you'll see now it's taking top from this uh, from this browser level but the point i will give this item to position relative then this will basically take this item to as its parents and everything will work properly so now i'll go here and i'll give the item to which is the parent as position relative now let's save it let's see see now it's taking here and if i now let's give a top of 20 px so it's taking basically from here to 20 px if i give left it will basically go here for example let's say i'll give a left of 80 px or let's give how much we'll give 200 px so it's going here all right but again if i just now remove this one this position if i remove so it's it will start from here so this is basically the concept simple concept if there is a item that a position absolute and it will always first check that whether its parent has a position relative or not if it has a position relative parent for example its item to is position relative so then it will take uh, this item as its parent and it will behave the same way but if there is not then it will always take the browser as its parent and then it will basically do the things something like this so let's say here we are having top and left so it will it is taking the browser as its parent not right so this is basically the concept of position absolute next we are having position fixed so position fixed is basically let's say there is an element all right and you have given the position as fixed so it will be always fixed at that point only so let's see how this will work so uh, what we can do uh, let's paste it multiple times we'll give the same thing so let's save it so we're getting a nice call now i'll go there first i'll make the item two as position relative and then i'll take another let's say div here and let's give the fixed element and let's give a class name of fix element let's copy this so we'll go here and do fixed element and i'll give this one position as fixed that's it now for position fixed also you will be able to apply top left right and bottom if i now save this now let's give uh, some property here we'll give uh, some background of we'll give some different color this one we'll give a width of 300 px height of 300 px that's it and we'll give a color of white and we'll give a font size of 30 px So you can see that it is always fixed here all right so this is basically the difference so it will be always fixed at that point you will be able to give left also let's say i'll give a left of 300 px let's see what is happening so it's now on the left side all right if you give a top of 400 px so it will be on the top and it will be at that place only see it is there only so this is the uh, difference between position fixed and position absolute now let's learn about uh, z index or z index you can basically say that is very important so so for example let's say uh, what we'll do i'll just remove all of this all right so i think we have to take another div then i'll take another div here and this is our item three and i'll take this one as a class of item three so this is what we are having let's remove this fixed element for now so now here we'll notice one thing what will happen this item two is position of uh, relative correct now if i go here and let's give a top of 200 px uh, let's make this one as 90 px so you can see that's coming uh, it's basically overlapping with item 3 the point is because this item 3 is now position of static now here z index will comes into picture so based on the z index value you will be basically able to uh, 
manage this behavior of the item overlapping so for example the higher the jd index value so it will be on the always on the top the lower the jd index value it will be on the bottom so for example this item 2 now we are having now let's say item 3 i want to make it on top of item 2 so how we can do that so for example now i'll go here and let's say i'll give a jd index of 1 in this item 2 all right now i'll go here now again by default position will be static so we'll not be able to apply this z index so for this one the first thing what we need to do we need to make this item 3 as position relative if i now save this nothing is changing the point i'll give this z index as 2 which is higher than 1 now let's save it so item 3 is now coming on top all right now you are getting if i give z index of 0 now go there see now again it is on the below same thing you'll be able to see with this item one for example let's say uh, what we can do we'll give this item one poison relative let's give a top of 150 px let's see what is happening first so you can see that now we are not able to see item we are only able to see item two here not able to see item one because item two has a z index of one now i'll go here and i'll give a z index of three in this item one I'll go there so now you are able to see item 1 because this is of higher z index value so this is what is the concept of z index the higher the value it will basically like the higher precedence the lower it will be on the below so what we have learned we have learned all the positions and all the z index now let's move on to the next one now another thing I want to mention again and again please try to practice these things because you will get a lot of questions from this particular section so that's all for this particular section let's move on to the next one Alright, so now let's learn with a very simple example that how we can basically do transition uh, in a HTML element. So for this one, what I'm going to do, I'll create a button here. And let's do this one, something like hover me. Alright, and let's give a class name of hover button. Let's save it. And then we are going to do a little bit of styling. So we'll do hover button uh, what we can do we can give a width of 100 px height of 50 px padding of 10 px background of uh, background color of black color of white let's give a border of 1 px so let's do 2 px solid uh, we'll do orange let's save it all right also we are going to do a cursor so cursor is pointer let's give a font size of 20 px and font weight of bold okay i think it's so um, overflowing so we'll do a uh, give this one as 200 px awesome so now let's say we want to apply some transition property to this button so how this transition property will work so here basically we have to tell that which property we want to transit all right what will be the duration the timing function so there are different types of timing function and what will be the delay that means after how much time you want to transit or basically do the transition for that particular element so for example let's say on hover of this particular button we want to change the background color all right or let's say the color to something else so we'll do like here so we'll do hover button and then we'll do a hover i think that we have already done and here we'll do background color of something else so for example what we can do mm, let's see how this is looking so we'll go here we'll hover okay this is fine so this we have now changed so now let's see how this will work so here we'll do a transition now here what i'm going to do so i'll tell that okay i want to do the background color transition all right and i want to do it let's say for three seconds then you have to basically pass the timing function and the delay but for now let's see this one what is happening so let's save it so now we'll notice once i'll hover here see so it's taking till three seconds if i now remove this it's taking three seconds 
so this is basically doing the transition all right now you will be obviously able to do multiple things also for example let's say i want to do a uh, here color of uh, orange all right and here instead of background color i want to do this one a color property let's save it so now if i hover here see now color is getting changed right so if i now hover this is getting uh, back to white all right all right so let's see how we can do multiple properties at once and also let's change this color to something else we'll do this one okay now let's see awesome okay now let's say i want to do multiple properties so i want to do color as well as background color so what you need to do just pass a comma and do a background color and then pass the time here so now let's save it so now let's see what will happen if i now hover so it's changing the background color and also the color same for if i now remove it's basically going to the initial state so this is what you need to do now again i already told you this will take some uh, function that you can pass so let's say i want to do background color do for three seconds then it will take some uh, timing function so that is ease is in is in out something like that and then it will take the delay so let's say i want to do it after one second all right so now let's save it let's see what is happening so i'll go here it will wait for one second then it is doing this one all right then i'll remove waiting one second and then again it's going back to the initial state so this is the whole concept of this transition so what exactly it will take again recap it will take the property that you want to uh, do the transition it will take the time timing function at the delay and if you want to do multiple you have to do this on using commas so that's all for this particular section now let's move on to the next one hey everyone so before ending this section let's understand another important property and that is called the transform so this transform property will basically uh, lets you to do something like rotate you can do translate any element based on some property so you can see that we are having some function that you can use and whatever values that you will be passing based on that it will do the uh, transform of that element for example if i do a scale so it's doing the scaling if i translate do uh, this element so it will translate based on these values that whatever you have given here all right so let's see how this will work so simply we'll do this uh, button example only that whatever we are doing here so we'll go here let's say i want to do a translate sorry i want to do a transform and i want to do a scale of 1.5 now notice how it is now so now the point i'll save this so it's now scale to 1.5 now if i make this one to 0.5 let's save it so it's now small you can also use the uh, translate x let's i'll pass like 300 px and let's go back so it's now here same goes for you can do translate y so it is now here you can also use only translate and you can pass uh, like how much you want to translate say i want to do 300 px and 200 px so you can see that this is happening like this so whatever you basically will pass based on that it will work all right let's say we want to do another thing okay i'll just do a rotate of for example 0.75 we'll do turn and let's see what is happening all right so you can see that if i now change this value so it's now rotating so this is all about the transform property so i think we have learned a lot of things in this section we have learned all the position things background uh background all the options for the background image repeat and these things then you have learned the transition and the transform now in the next section will be very very important so in the next uh, two section we'll be learning the main flex box then we'll run media queries and css grid and after that we'll be start working on the uh, projects that we'll be creating for this particular video so let's start working on this uh, in the next section all right everyone so let's learn the one of my absolute favorite topic and that is css uh, css flexbox so css flexbox is basically a layout module where you will be basically able to design flexible responsive layout structure without using any float or positioning so before this we usually use these four way of uh, positioning any html elements so this is basically introduced, uh, introduced very recently so here we need to learn a lot of things and this one will be very very important for you because whenever you'll be creating any web development or any website either you will be using flexbox or css grid so let's see what are the things that we'll be learning 
so learning that what is uh, display flex uh, flex direction the concept of flex wrap or basically wrapping multiple elements then we are having some of the properties like justify content align items align self align content flex grow flex shrink flex basis and order so for this one what i have done so you can see that i created some uh, a container and then there is some of the uh, flex items so currently we are having only five items if you notice that each and every item is taking full width the reason is obviously because these all are of block elements so although the text is till this part this will obviously take the full 100 percent width and it will push the next item to the below but let's see what will happen if we just apply a display flex now one very very important point is that whenever you want to achieve the display flex properties first you have to make the parent container a display flex until unless you'll apply the parent container a display flex all the other properties will not be applicable basically so let's see how this will work so i'll show you the structure so we are having a class name of flex container then there are five items and each and every item it has the inline style of background color all right uh, let's change this color this is looking a little light uh, let's change this one to this one uh, this is also looking very bad okay we'll do this one okay and also let's make this one little light Mm, okay okay this is fine so now let's go there first we'll start with uh, some of the basic styling so first you can see that we are having this title so let's give a class of title and we'll go there uh, let's take this title and we'll do a margin of 0 px and we'll do font size of 20 px all right next uh, we are having flex container so we'll do flex container first we'll do a width of one two double zero px all right and what else we can do we'll do a uh, we'll do a border of two px solid red let's save it all right this is fine next uh, we are having all the items so and let's make this one a little bit specific so we'll do all of this as flex item sorry i think we don't have to change all of this and this also will be this let's save it so now we'll go there and we'll do dot flex item we'll do a width of 100 px height of 100 px uh, we'll do a font size of 18 px color of we'll do white and we'll do font weight of boulder let's save this let's see awesome let's give some uh, margin also so we'll go there we'll do a margin top of 20 px all right now here you can see that although we are having some limited width and height still it is coming on this uh, line like one after another what will happen if we try to access or basically implement the flex properties here so I, as i already mentioned that if you want to apply or basically take any flex properties first you have to make the parent container a display flex and then only all the others properties will be applicable so we'll go there and this is a flex container and just we'll do a display and we'll make this one a flex now let's save it now let's see what is happening awesome so now you can see that if i now just inspect and go there so you can see that this flex is basically getting applied here so now it is basically giving you all the options that what are the properties that you will be able to apply all right so this is the first step i'll make this one down so the first thing you have learned is that whenever you want to access the flex properties you have to basically apply a display flex let's move on to the next one so next we are having flex direction so flex always will have a main axis all right so this main axis by default this flex direction will have a axis of row so row means it will start from left to right 
in this way all right so let's see what will happen if we try to act, change this flex direction from row to column so again the flex direction will be applicable only to the parent container so this is basically our parent container so I, I can change the direction from row to column so row is basically by default all right so if i now do row it will be nothing will change still it is it will be row the point i'll change this one to column see now you'll see that this is coming from top to bottom the reason is because now the flex axis is basically getting changed so it's now from top to bottom on the column level all right so this is how you need to change the axis so if you do again flex direction to row so this will be on the row you will be able to change this one to reverse so row reverse means obviously it will be from the opposite side so now see what is happening so it's starting from right to left so the axis is basically starting from here to it's going to this side same goes for column reverse so if i do column reverse now you'll see it's the item one is starting from here and it's going to um, two three four and five all right so this is another very important thing that you have learned so with uh, using this flex direction you will be basically able to change the axis all right so here you can see there what it is telling that this basically specify how the flex item are placed by it's setting the direction of the main axis so this is called the main axis all right now next thing let's make this one to row again now next thing we need to know this is flex uh, what is flex right now this is another very very important now how we are going to able to understand let's see what will happen if i now add some more item here so i'll just copy this let's copy this one then i'll copy this one and then i'll just copy again all of this and paste it again here let's save it now let's paste one more time All right, so you can see that now it's basically trying to stay with this uh, container only but this is looking very odd but what will happen if i now make uh, or basically break this container into multiple lines or basically we need to wrap these flex items so in that case what you can do whenever there is a, a more than items than the container level so you will be able to basically apply this flex wrap which will do a wrap so that means it will wrap all the items now you'll see what is happening it is taking full 100 percent uh, 100 pixel uh, width but whenever it is overflowing it is breaking the items to the next level correct so let's see how this will work if i now try to add all of this again so i'll copy all of this and i'll paste it again here let's save it so now see again it is breaking into next level all right now if i try to change this one so let's go to flex container see if i now change this one to no wrap so it will be very odd obviously it will try to shrink then we are having wrap then again reverse as the name suggests it will basically will reverse so most of the times you will use this wrap only and this is very very helpful all right so this at the end is basically wrapping all the items uh, one after another whenever there is an overflow uh, if there are more more number of items so if you use flex wrap as wrap so it will basically wrap the items into multiple levels all right now next uh, let's move on to the next one so i'll just remove all of this again from here and we'll do one two three four and five all right next we are having justify content so justify content is basically to change the alignment of this item and how we are going to understand this one so let's say i'll just go to the main container again this will be applicable in the main container only so i'll do a justify content and i want to make all the contents in the center uh, based on the parent so if i do this one so it will be center based on this main axis all right so this is very important so this is one thing next we are having now these all the things you will only learn when you will apply all of this in a real project believe me or not see you can't memorize all of this at once you have to practice then we are having center now at the as the name suggests it is very easy to understand end or flex and means it will push the items to the end so it's going to the end same for flex and start means obviously it will be on the start 
same for left normal will be uh, default right means again left then there are three so one is space around so it will basically as the name suggests it will give the space around all the items then there is a space between and then evenly means it will be same space uh, for all the items if you notice there is a huge difference between evenly and around correct so evenly means it will be same space around me uh, sorry between means it will be like in between there is no space on the left and right then there is around so these all you can use now these three are also very very helpful that you can you will be using most of the times then we are having revert and I'll suggest that most of the I can guarantee that most of the times you'll either uh, use this center or flex end or flex start or these three space around space evenly and this space between all right now let's do one thing uh, I'll uh, show you one very interesting thing and that is uh, if I make this one to column and now now you'll see that if I try to apply anything so justify content is not happening because the now the main axis is basically changed so in that case we have to basically apply another property so that we'll be discussing but before that uh, let me show you another very important thing and that is uh, so we'll come to the next one which is called the align items so align items is again so for this one we need to give some height I let's I'll give a height of 300 px let's save it and now see align means i want to basically see there is a main axis i already told you so currently it is row so this will be our main axis on the row level then there is a cross axis which is the column level so align items means we want to align the items on the cross axis level so we have to basically apply this align items property so let's say i want to make all the items on the center vertically so to use this center if i now save this I'll see that now on the cross axis level also this is in the center so this is one very very important point that how you will be able to center any item uh, using flexbox so here what we have done so you can see that we have a width and height and then we are having display of flex then justify content is center and align item is center all right now again the same goes for align items also so there are some other properties also that you can use for example we can use baseline center obviously will center end means will be at the end same for flex and flex start means it will from the start all right so these things you can basically experiment and then you can uh, test most of the times again you'll use center or flex and or flex start all right again, also sometimes you can also you know, use this help start or basically start so this is one thing now you will understand what will happen if I now make this one too so I'll just comment these both and I'll do flex direction to column now see here obviously okay this is now wrapping this is fine because we have a height let me just remove this height also okay now you see that I want to make this one on the middle how we can do that because now the now you can see that the main axis is on the y level so what you need to do can you guess so you have to make this align items as center now you can see that this is on the center correct because the flex direction is now column so this is another very very important thing so till now what we have learned we have learned flex flex direction wrap justify content and align items now another very very important thing you will be learning that is align self so let's see what basically this so for this one what i'm going to do i'll make this one as row and i'll do justify content as center and align item as center and also i'll do height of 300 so it will be on the center now let's say there is a requirement that you have to make this flex four item and this flex two item so you have to make the flex two item on the top flex item four you have to make on the bottom how you will be basically able to do that because currently you have applied on the container level that it should be all the items should be on the center so here this align self uh, comes into picture so for this one what i'll do let's say on the item here i'll give another class name so item 2 and here i'll give a item 4 all right now we will give basically some uh, special class name we have given so we'll do dot flex item dot item 2 so that means we are targeting this item 2 and now here it's very very important what you need to do this will be on the item level so let's we want to make this item 2 on the top 
what you can do you can do align self so that means you do self alignment for this particular item only and it'll make this one flex start so we'll start from the start if i now save this see now it's starting from the top all right correct you got it now again same goes for dot flex item dot item 4 because we want to do item 4 on the bottom so we'll do align self uh we'll do this one uh, this one as flex end now let's save this see now it's on the bottom correct now again you, you will be basically able to change this so whatever you'll give center end it's on the end flex end flex start same goes for the item 4 also so i'll change this one so you can see that this is now changing so now if you want to change any individual item positioning so you can use this align self property all right now next uh, we'll do align content all right so now let's run, uh, learn what basically this align content is so for this one what we are going to do i'll just comment out this align self from here and then i'm going to copy this and then paste it two more times now let's save it so we can see that uh, let me change one more thing we'll go there and we'll remove this flex wrap all right now the first thing what i want to mention here is that this is very important and that this align align content this property that we are having this will only work if you are using this flex wrap is as wrap or that means you are wrapping the items so let's see what will happen for example if i just uncomment this one from here so you're already making this justify content as center and align items as center so that means all the items will be centered but you'll notice one thing there is a extra space here all right so now let's say you want to remove this extra space how you're going to do that so that is the reason this align content will comes into picture so here again you need to use this one on the container level so let's say i will do align content and i want to make this one on the end if i now save this now see what will happen now see there that extra space is not there all right so that means this is aligning all the content basically all the items that we are having and it is very very important that you have to basically do this one on the flex if the items are on the flex wrap is wrap if i now say, remove this obviously this will not work now again you can do this like flex start so it will be on the start and then you can do center so it will be on the center all right so you don't have any extra space so that means we have learned almost all the basic things that you'll be using most of the times now let's learn some of the advanced uh, flex properties for example flex grow shrink and the order so for this one the first thing what i'm going to do let me just remove this structure or comment out and uh, here i'm going to create another structure i'll give a div and let's say we, we are having some paragraph here so this is for example some item one and then we are having item two and three and here i'm going to use some lauren epsom content so i think this is fine now so here we'll give this one as a class name so we'll give some like content and we'll go there and for this one let's use this content and we'll use a width of 80 uh, percent we'll do a border of 1 px solid all right then uh, we are having this paragraph 1 2 so we'll give class name so we'll, uh, give this one or let's give this one as content 1 and this is content 3 and this will be content 2 so we'll give this one as content 1 then we are having content 2 then we are having content 3 all right now let's go there so for now i think we are having this this is fine so first thing we'll apply our display flex all right now then we are having content 1 so for this one what we can do and here also we'll use a height of let's say 400 or 300 350 px so for content one we are going to use a background color of red and we'll do a color of white 
and we'll copy this paste it two more times this will be content two and this will be content three so it's some different color here let's say this one and we'll make this one as black and here we'll do something different let's say this one and we'll keep this one white all right now we'll see that obviously we are these are in the flex box now one very very interesting i want to show here what will happen in this middle content that we are having here we'll give this one some fixed width so let's say here this content 2 that we are having right so we'll give this one width of 250 px let's save it all right so this is now shrinking that is fine let's do one thing we'll go there and in the content level or basically in the container we'll give the justify content as space uh, between all right so that we don't have any extra space now you'll see that because the fixed is uh, the width is fixed so you have this extra space so how we are going to manage this one using a flex property so here this flex grow will comes into picture so what we can do we can give a flex grow property of one what will happen it will basically expand that content and it will basically consume that extra space although we have this width fixed here and this is very important now again uh, just like we have learned in the z index that the higher the z index so it will basically give the higher priority similarly this flex grow also for example if i give this flex uh, sorry content one as flex grow of two see what will happen if i now save this see now it's taking twice all right and this is because one so this is how uh, it will work and by default i think if i now give this one as one so you can see that this will be flex row of one and this is also flex grow of one i believe so we'll give this one as two let's see what will happen now see this is more all right so this uh, this is one of the very important property that you can use next uh, i think we are having flex shrink now this is also another uh, very interesting thing so what we can do to uh, see these uh, properties are very very difficult to like explain in terms of theory so what you need to do you have to basically practice all of this and implement in in a real life project and i'm again telling this point again and again so what we can do let's say we are having this content right so we'll give a width of 1200 px all right this is fine now for each and every content i'll give a width of 1000 px for example all right and let's remove this one from here let's save this now see although the parent one has a width of 1200 pix but if you add all of this it is now 3000 if i now go there see what is happening this is automatically basically taking how much it is required see in, if you think in terms of theory okay it, it might exceed because the item if you sum all the item width which is 1000 px 1000 px 1000 px which is 3000 px but the container width is 1200 px all right so here basically what you can do you can use this flex uh, string property that you are having but how we are going to basically use that so let me just show you one very interesting thing i'll just inspect here and let me just go to the computed so see that this has a width of 400 same for this content two width of 400 same content one width of 400 that means what it is doing it is dividing the container width divided the number of items you are having correct although you have given um, like very uh, uh, like very high width or basically large width here which is 1000 1000 1000 but you can basically manage this one using this flex string property so what we can do simply let's say on this flex uh, content one i'll give a flex shrink of two now one is actually by default if i now save this see what will happen all right so you can see that what is happening basically so it's because we've given a flex shrink of two that means this content is basically getting shrink by twice all right so i can show you here if you go to compute it previously it was 400 now it's 100 so that 300 is basically divided into these two now it's 550 and this is 550 let's see what will happen if i give the same flex ring 2 in the content 3 so here if i now save this see now here 
this is 280 this is 280 which is 560 and this is 640 correct so this is how you will be able to shrink all of this if uh, using this basically flex uh, shrink property now next at the end we are having this flex basis now this is another very interesting so to explain this one what i'm going to do uh, i'm going to comment out this content one and three and then uh, what i'll do uh, let me just remove this i think what i've done okay i'll just comment out from here and here what i'll do i'll give a flex basis of for example 600 px now let's save it now let's see what is happening okay i'll think that okay so here this is now taking 600 uh, width which is basically similar to giving width but the point is because this is very important in the content we have a flex direction of row because flex direction row is uh, by default so here i'll give a flex direction of row because we've given flex direction of row in the parent so it's this flex uh, basis whatever we have given here this is taking the width but the point is the um, uh, whenever we'll give this flex direction as column that time it will be taking the width and this is very very tricky sometimes so let's see what will happen the, see now what will happen the point i'll change this one from flex direction row to column see now what will happen all right so this is exceeding okay let me we have a height of 350 let me make this one as 1000 px huh now you'll see i make this one from row to column now go to flex uh, content to see now if you noticed here if i go to compute it now it says a height of 600 not width that means depending on the flex direction if you are having flex direction row it will take the width so now width is 600 if you have a flex direction column now it will take the height as 600 so this is the uh, difference and this is how you can use this flex basis all right everyone so we have completed almost all the properties that you need to know regarding flex now let's uh, complete this journey with this order property so for this one i'm again what i've done i just commented all of this and kept these five uh, flex item that we are having now let's say we want to change the order of these items that we are currently having here without changing the actual html code so here this order property will comes into picture so for example let's say what i've done i've added another class in the last item which is item 5 now i want to make this item 5 at the first and all the other items should come after that so what we can do to achieve that so by default all of this will have a order of let's say one so we can basically take this flex item that we are having and then we can target the item 5 item and then we'll do a order property of minus one negative one because negative one will come before that let's save it now let's see what will happen awesome so now this item will is coming basically before all of this see what will happen now i'll give this flex item four a negative two now then it should come before this so i'll go here and do flex item dot item four and we'll do a order of negative two let's save this now flex item four is coming then five one two and three now another very interesting thing that we can do so we are having this flex item correct so we'll go to this flex item and i'll give a by default order of one now let's say i'll give another class name which is item three now what i'll do because all of this having order of one if i now go here and then do dot flex item dot item of three and i'll give this one a order of positive two so that means this is the largest so now what will happen i think you will be able to guess so item three will come at the end so now item three is coming at the end item four because it's of minus two then item five minus one then these two are of item one uh, sorry order one and then we are having item three which is order of uh, two so this is how this order property will work so now with this we have completed and learned almost all the things now what we are going to do we will be applying all of this while creating very simple project now one thing i just want to mention because this will be a full length of six months of web development journey so this video that we are creating that is in html css that will be very very beginner level so will not create like very complex project it will be very difficult to understand so this video is designed in such a way that for complete beginners who don't have any knowledge so we'll be creating very very simple project and we'll be explaining each and everything why we are doing that so this is what we are doing till now i hope you are getting 
so i'm repeating again and again please do this one means while watching this video please try to write this code along with this watching this video basically what i'm trying to say means don't just watch this video and then uh, do nothing it will not work believe me you have to practice all of this what you can do simply go to google search for any dummy project simple project and then try to implement all of these flexbox properties that you've learned so far and create one simple project once you're able to complete a simple project it will be very easy for you to complete any complex project also all right so this is one thing i just want to mention all right so enough lecture now let's move on to the next section hey everyone so let's start another new section and this is called the css media queries now media queries are basically used to style your layout for different different uh, breakpoints or different devices if i give you one very practical example let's say if i click on this inspect and let's click uh, this toggle device toolbar you'll see that we'll be having so many different devices and for each and every device it will have a certain dimension so uh, if i give you one very uh, good example so you're, let's say you're creating a website from scratch and there is a button which will have a font size of 50 px or 150 px if you try to display the same button for a smaller device that button will break all right so this is a very very important thing that you need to remember so that means we need to basically somehow change the button style so that it will look good in for smaller devices so here this media uh, media queries will comes into picture now this is all about the theory part now obviously it will be very difficult to understand so let's see with a very very simple example because later when we'll be creating um, projects so we'll be basically creating two projects in this video so we'll be uh, applying the media queries and that time it will be very very easy for you to understand so for now what i'm going to do so you can see that we are having a h1 with a class of title and there is a text now here i'll just simply take a div and inside this i'll have a let's say a paragraph of item one and i'll take another p and i'll do item two all right so this is what exactly we are having let me just close everything and also uh, let me change one more thing yeah so we'll keep like this now we'll go to our styles the first thing what i'm going to do i'll give a body a background color so let's say i want to give a background color of red now uh, next thing we'll do we'll do h1 so we had a we are having a h1 here which is a class of title let's give dot title target the class and we'll give a font size of 100 px all right so you're having 100 px then we are having a div which will have a class name of let's say items wrapper and here we'll target this one so we'll do items wrapper and we'll do a display of flex for this one all right so we are having item one and item two now here uh, what i'm going to do i'll do dot items wrapper of p so we are uh, we are having this p here so we'll do a width of uh, 100 px for both we'll do a font size of 20 px or let's make 35 px or let's do 40 px all right so i think it's breaking so let's increase this one to 200 px okay now uh, let's give a background color also so we'll do one thing for first p so we'll target the first child we'll do a background color of green all right and then for the second one or basically the last one so you have to do last child so we'll do a background color of uh, let's say violet okay now there is a requirement in your project that for smaller devices which will have a uh, width of less than 1200 px for example like uh, this is just assumption we need to basically make these items that we are having not in a row view but we have to make this one in a column view and also you have to decrease or basically uh, give a little bit of small font size instead of this big how we are going to do that so for this one this media query will comes into picture so what we need to do we have to basically do media and then you will do only screen now here also you can use like media screen this will also work and you'll give a uh, parameter which is and and here you have to basically specify either mean width or max width so here i'll give a max width 
of let's say 1200 px so that means what i'm telling that if the width is equal to 1200 px or less than that so this is very important so it should not be more than that so the maximum will be 1200 px so if it is less than that inside this i want to do certain manipulation so for example let's say i want to change the font size of this title so how you are going to do that again inside this you have to target with this class name so we'll go here and we'll paste it and let's say i want to make the font size of 50 px instead of 100 px now let's format this let's save it now let's see what will happen i'll go to inspect and then i'll click here okay i think let's me do it responsive so we'll increase now notice here what will happen and also notice here so you're having font size of 100 px we'll do the point it will go less than 1200 see now it is overriding this style that we are having and it is prioritizing this media query here because if it is max width is 1200 or less than that see if i increase this one here right so it's now again increasing to sorry it is still in 50 px the point i'll increase now it's 100 if i do less see it's basically uh, still it is 50 px all right so this is how it will work all right so now let's say uh, we want to do another thing so uh, here you can see that we are having the background color of red right so let's say we want to change this one to something else and also we want to make this one in the column view so for this one again what we can do inside this only we will target let's say body and here we'll do a background color of something else so for example we'll choose which one uh, this one let's save it now let's see what is happening now see this is changing if i go more than 1200 so it's now red if it is less than it's changing similarly you can basically target the items wrapper and then we'll do display uh, sorry we'll do a flex direction of column all right so here we are having display of flex so now if i save this now it's in column view if i go more than 1200 it is in row view if it is less than so this is you can see that this is how it will work now another thing i want to show that for example let's say so this is all about the max width now what what about the mean width so um, let me just uh, comment it here so now what i'll do what i want to do i'll give a media and i'll do a media only screen and i'll do a mean width so we'll do a mean width of let's say uh, 1366 px mean width means the minimum has to be this and it will be larger than that so that means once it will reach 1366 or more than that this media query will apply for max it will be this is max and less than that but for mean it will be minimum this and more than that both are opposite now let's say if it is mean with this one so i'll do no body i'll do a different color so i'll do a background color of orange see what will happen now it is in one zero uh, one zero one six right so now i'll go this one to more than one three six six and also let me minimize this one five six seventy five the point i'll go see now i'm going more than one three six six now it's changing because now what is happening if i go to body right so you go to body so now this background color of orange is applying because now it is mean width so minimum has to be 1366 which is correct if i go less than that it is red more than that it's applying here so this is the difference between mean and max hey everyone now in this section uh, we will be learning another new concept in css and this is called css grid now unlike css flex box uh, using this grid also you will be basically able to build different kinds of layout so what i've done you can see that I have this grid container here and then I have had like nine grid items basically all right so item one two nine and I have some basic uh, basic styling here now you remember that whenever we'll give display flex so now flex and grid are not exactly similar so let's see with an example so this is our main parent container and here if I give display of flex so now see that uh, this is what it will look and this concept we have already discussed but now let's say we want to uh, 
build this particular layout using CSS grid. So similar to flex, whenever you want to use any grid properties, again you have to basically give a display of grid in the parent container. Until and unless you will give the display of grid in the parent container, you will not be able to use any other properties that are related to CSS grid. So let's see what will happen if I now give here display as grid. So that means I want this container to be a grid container. Now you'll see that it's little bit different. So it's taking the full space and all the items are coming one after another. So this is number one key concept that whenever you want to style your layout uh, using grid. So the first thing you have to give the parent container a display of grid. Now there are some other properties. So most of the most of the important properties like let's say you want to build a layout using some column and row view. So for that uh, there are some uh, grid uh, template properties that we can basically use. So for example let's say I want to do a column view of something. So for this one we you can see that we have so many options obviously. I want to do a grid template columns alright. So this is one property. What it will do it will basically space separated track list alright. So this is a uh, each and every properties that you are seeing here that will be able to uh, convert into a function also. So all of this actually basically functions of grid. Now for example I want each and every row should have two columns. For example there is a grid item 1, 2 and then rest of the others similar to that. So 1, 2 then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what we can do here let's say we can give one effer. Now one effer is basically means one fraction and then one effer. If I now save this, let's see what is happening. All right. So now you can see that we are getting in um, uh, these two view uh, or basically this grid item is taking one fraction of width. Same for grid item 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There is no space. So this space will not be utilized. If I add another uh, div here, obviously this will work. So let's I'll add, uh, sorry, I'll copy this and then I'll add uh, grid item 10. Let's say with the same color. So let's save it. So now see grid item 10 is coming here. Good. I'll just remove this one. All right. So this is what we called a fraction. If I give here one more. So let's say one FR. Let's save it. So now this will be a three template, uh, three grid template columns, uh, column view. All right. If we inspect here, let's go to inspect. Now if I go to this layout here, you'll see that we are having this grid layout uh, or grid overlays. If I click here, you'll be able to see all the grid items basically, this red dotted line. Let's go to our styles and if I go to each and every item that we are having, you'll see that we are having a width of 166 and it will be almost same for each and every element that we are having, alright. So this is another very important thing that you need, you can basically use these grid uh, template columns. Now let's say what will happen if I give here two fraction instead of one. So now let's save it, let's see. So now you can see that this uh, item will take the twice as friction width as this item three and item one. So here, if I now inspect this one, so it is taking 125, it is taking 125 and this will be taking around 250, all right. Also you will be able to give with uh, pixel also let's say I want this one to be 100 pixel so this will also work so now this will be 100 pixel this is 2 fr so it will automatically basically calculate it and this will be 133 or whatever all right so this is all about the grid template columns property now let's move on to the next one so next one we'll be learning grid, uh, grid template rows all right so now let's understand how we can basically use grid uh, template rows property so for this one first I'll do one thing I'll just uh, comment out this and only keep these three item and also remove this comment out this grid template columns. So this is now looking like this. Now grid template rows is basically uh, will specify that how much width of each and every row you want. So let's I'll give a grid template rows of 200 px or let's give this one as 100 px. Let's save it. So now let's see what is happening. So you can see that this is taking now 100 px and the rest r is basically divided the rest of the width that we are having sorry the i height we are having but what will happen because currently we are having three rows so the syntax will be exactly similar to this grid template column so you have to basically specify that okay i want each and every row has to be 100 px 100 px and 100 px if i now save this now you can see that all of these uh, three are uh, 100 px 
this is also 100 this is 100 and this is also 100 now you can also use the concept of one fr one fraction so let's say i want these to be 100 px and 100 px but this has to be one fr so now you'll see this this now is basically dividing most of the height that is required and this two will be basically fixed so this is 100 now this is now 300 so 300 100 400 and this is now 100 which is 500 and this is the height all right if you want you can give one fr one fr and one fr so which is now this will be equally divided into three part all right now let's do one thing now let's i'll uncomment this one let's save it now i'll see that this will definitely break because currently we have one two three nine items but you have only given grid template rows for three rows so that is the reason the rest of this one basically trying to fit somehow so now what i'm going to do first i'll just comment out this one grid template columns and i'll do a three column layout so one fr this also will be one fr and this is one fr now let's save it i'll see now we are having see similar so this is now one fr uh one fr row or basically the first fraction of row this is second this is third now if i give here let's say two so now the second row will take twice as a fraction so now it's taking twice as a height all right i hope you're getting you can also make this one fixed so let's say i'll do this one as a uh, 50px so first one will be one fr now this because this is a fix so now this will try to fit so this will increase the height automatically so this is how you will be able to basically combine both uh, this grid template rows and grid template columns now there is a shorthand property that we can use that is to combine all of this at once so for this one what we need to do we have to use this grid template i think we have grid uh, template so now here basically we have to give the rows value that we want divided by the columns values so here uh, i'll just copy this so you have to copy this paste it here you have to give this slash and then you have to basically give the grid template columns properties and this will work this is similar to what we have done previously so now this will definitely work now let's say if i make this one the first grid template so this is the grid template rows part so i'll make both one fr one fr and one fr and the columns so this is the columns part so which is also one fr if i now save this i can see that all are equally divided so either you can use grid template so the first one will be your grid template rows property divided by grid template columns property so this is the shorthand basically all right so this is all about the mo see most of the times you will use this display grid this uh, grid template columns grid template rows there are some function that we'll be discussing later and then there is another very very important property that is called grid gaps so that also will be doing so this is all about this particular section let's move on to the next one all right so now let's learn another uh, important concept in grid and that is called the min max now let's say i'll just comment out this one and uh, let's say we are having this grid template columns of one fr uh, so we'll keep this one one fr and let's see how this is looking okay so we are getting all of this in this line now what we can basically do we can uh, use a particular function which will define that how much minimum width you want or the maximum for each and every rows template rows that you are using currently we are using only one fraction for each and every row so now here what you can do you can basically uh, use this min max and here first value should be min all right this is important so let's say i want each and every column has to be minimum minimum of 100 pixel and then maximum of 200 px if i now save this now what will happen and notice one thing that container width is 500 px all right so if i go here i'll see for each and every row which is taking the automatically the maximum one because this will be less than the container width right so that is the reason this is taking 200 pixel which is the max width that you have given all right now let's i'll make this one as one fr if i now save this now i'll see that this will take the full if i make this one uh, for example 450 px so this will be take till this part let's i'll make this one as 1000 px now see what will happen still it will take one fr correct because the container width is 500 px so this is very important so let's make this one one fr 
so now let's say we want to do this one for multiple times because we want in one we want three columns so what you can do you just have to copy this just like you have done one fr one fr one fr so you can copy this and paste it multiple times all right so now let's save it now let's see now you can see we are getting in the same column view now let's say i want to make the second column a minimum of 200 px so you can save this now see now this will be minimum of 200 but although you can see that this is taking 200 this will take 150 and this will take now 150 so automatically this will be divided because this one has to be minimum of 200 px correct so this is how you can use this min max function then we are having another one and that is called a repeat function so just like what we have done here so let's uh, do this one very very simple so let's say i'll comment it out here i have this grid template columns of 1fr 1fr and 1fr all right now instead of writing this on multiple times we can basically use a function which is called repeat so let's say i want to repeat three times and what should be the value so let's say i want to repeat one fr so this is similar to what we have done here one fr one fr one fr as simple as that now you can see that this is happening right now same you can also use for grid template rows so let's say i'll do grid template uh, rows for example and i'll do repeat three one fr if i now save this now obviously nothing will change but this is similar to what we have done here so we have done one fr one fr one fr right so this is how it will look so instead of writing this on multiple times you can use the repeat function you have to tell how many times you want to repeat and what will be the basically the value here all right now next uh, we are having another uh, three important properties that you should know and after this uh, i think you will be good enough to start your css journey so the first one is that we called a column gap so this will be basically between the uh, go gaps between the columns so let's i'll give a 20 px so now you can see that we are getting this gap uh, between these columns all right there is no gap in the rows all right this one is very very helpful whenever let's say you are creating any kind of e-commerce website and you have a product grid so you can use this column gap uh, column gap then we are having the row gap so this is uh in rows so now you'll see that we are getting this row gap in between these items now if you want to combine both of these this row gap and column gap so there is a very very important property and that is called the grid gap so grid gap will basically let me just check so i think it's now deprecated so i think we can use only gap this is also will work gap is basically will combine this column gap and row gap so if i give here 20 px you'll see that the same thing will happen so you see nothing will change so it's now uh, like giving the difference or basically the uh, diff here of 20 px on the column side and the same on the row size all right uh, so this is what you can use so till now we have learned uh, i'll just recap everything that to use the display grid property we have to first use display of grid in the parent container then we are having grid template columns all right grid template rows grid template which will basically is the combination of grid template rows and columns then we have min max function all right repeat function column gap row gap and then if you want to combine both of these you can use gap also uh, right now most of the times you use gap because you need this kind of criteria only so i think that's all for this uh, grid chapter now let's move on to the next one the next one we'll be learning some of the advanced css features and after that we'll be start uh, implementing our project all right everyone so now i think in the previous section we've understood how uh, css grid works now in this section we will be learning some of the very basic animation concepts now in this particular uh, journey that what we will be doing in next six seven months so there will be some advanced uh, css course also all right so in that course we'll be learning more complex features but because this is only for the beginners we'll be learning only very basic things so let's see how animation is actually work so what i'll do i'll just uh, delete everything from here and then uh, we'll delete this one also we'll give css animations uh, here i'll take a div and i'll do animate me and we'll do a class of card for example so we'll go here and we'll do card uh, we'll give a width of 250 px height of 250 px we'll do a background color of green and we'll do a color of white now we'll do a display of flex 
justify content center and align items center save this so you're getting this one now to uh, animate this particular box or any properties we have to basically learn what actually keyframe is so keyframe is basically you have to define whenever you want to animate this card uh, div here using animation uh, properties all right so there are different types of animation properties first let's start with very important to the this is called animation name so you can see that this is the animation shorthand so this also will be learning but this is animation name so here you need to give any name which is basically your keyframe name so this is sorry this will be your keyframe name so here whatever name you have you will give here so this has to be the same as the keyframe so how we will be basically creating a keyframe so you have to take at the rate and this will be your keyframe and here you have to give the identifier identifier is basically your keyframe name so let's say what i want to do i want to change uh, this color of this particular text for example and also before that let's give a font size of 30 px or 25 px so now I'll do change uh, text color. So this is my uh, animation, uh, sorry, keyframe name. And this has to be your animation name that you'll be giving here. So I'll copy this and I'll pass it here. All right. And then there is an animation duration. So let's say I want to do for five seconds. Now here, what we have to do, we have to give certain properties. So for example, we want to basically change from color so let's say we are having a color of uh, what we'll do we'll do red then we'll do two color let's say pink now let's see what is happening if i now save this all right now it's already happened so i'll just refresh this page so see i'll refresh so it's changing to red then it's changing to pink so that means it's changing from from which is the from property from red to pink so here if I change this one to something else, let's say I'll go here and do this one and then I'll change this one also. Let's say I'll do some blue color. Now let's save this and I'll refresh this. So it's now automatically changing and this has to be the time, how much time you want to do it. All right here you can also add background color so let's say i want to do background color so background color already have a green background color so i want to do something like uh, white for example or let's make a black background color two let's say i'll do a something else what we can do we'll do a uh, this color white color now let's see what is happening let's save this see both background and the text color are changing all right if i refresh this so it's going to black and then it's going to that color and at the same time this text is also getting changed so this is the very very basic concept so basic concept is that whatever element you want to animate so first let's say i want to animate this div so i have to give an animation name which has to be a keyframe all right keyframe will take certain properties and then you will basically mention that what i want to do from and obviously it's not about from and to there are so many other things that we can also do so this is just one of the properties so i want to make the color from this to this and you have to then give the animation name and the duration for how much time you want to do the animation now there are some other properties that we'll be learning but uh, please try to implement these things by your own i'm again repeating this thing css is like a Thing like you will not be able to understand theoretically you have to practice there is no other shortcut all right so this is the very basic thing now let's move on to the next one in the next round we'll be learning some other properties related to animation all right so let's learn two more properties related to animation so one is animation iteration count and second one is animation delay so let's i'll give animation uh, iteration counts means how many times i want to do the animation let's say two times i'll refresh this now see what will happen so this is happening one time all right now again it will happen two times so this is another animation property that you can use the second one is animation delay so which will be so here i'll give let's say three seconds so it will start up that three seconds so i'll refresh this page so it will wait for three seconds and then the animation will start see now it's starting so first time 
and then it will be second time because we have given animation iteration count as two all right so now let's learn and some of the more uh, features that we can use for example let's say i want to do something else instead of this color change i'll comment it out and i'll create another keyframes i'll do change transition something like that so i'll do at zero percent uh, what i want to do i'll do a transform of uh, translate x of 300 px and then i'll do a hundred percent at hundred percent i'll do a transform of translate x i'll do zero px now let's save this now i will use this transition here now let's see what is happening save this so it's waiting for some time now see starting the animation then it will be again because we have given animation iteration count as two so it's starting again all right so this is how you can use so many properties whatever properties that you want to use now you can also do something like this let's say uh, for zero percent i will do a background color uh, or let's keep this one so zero percent i'll do a transform and then i'll change the background color to yellow then on 25 percent i'll do a transform of translate uh, we'll do a translate x of 250 px and i'll do a background color of blue then on 50 percent i'll do a transform of translate x of uh, we'll do a 280 px again and i'll do a background color of something else let's say uh, which one brown and then at 100 percent i will do a transform of zero pixel so it will come to the initial position and then i'll do a background color of something else let's say green so now let's see what will happen if i now save this it will wait for some time now it will start see color is changing again it's going and then it's coming to the same position again it will start because we have given the animation iteration count as two so this is all the main properties that we can use and based on that we can uh, do any uh, animation on any properties so if i re recap again now there are so many other properties that we can use but for now i think this four will be more than enough in the beginner level so first we have to give the animation name which will be a keyframe and in the keyframe basically will define that what exactly you want to do then there is animation duration for how much time you want to do and then there is animation iteration count how many times you want to do and then there is animation delay after how much time you want to do it all right so this is all about the animation section that we'll be learning now let's move on to the next one next one we'll be learning some of the css features and that that will be it in terms of theory all right after that we'll be start working on the projects all right everyone so we have learned that uh, how we can basically animate a particular html element using all the properties now let's learn uh, some of the uh, features that you are going to most probably use whenever you'll create any kind of web application so the first one is that we'll be learning what is before and after pseudo element so here i'm going to just comment it out let's remove this one i think it will be better and then i'll give this one before and after so before and after these pseudo elements is basically used to insert something using only css now this is important you will not you no need to change anything in the html code so for example let's say we are having this uh, i'll do something like this to remove this one and we are having this div i'll change this one to p we are having this animate me something like that any random text now i want to insert something before this text or after now doesn't matter it has to be text you can also insert whatever content you need that you can do so how we are going to do that so let's say whenever there is a p inside this whole html i want to do something like that so what we can do we can target this p first i'll give a font size here so we'll give a font size of 50 px so let's see what is happening so we're having animate me so and now to insert something before of this p element we have to take this you can see there is a after and then before and obviously there are some others also now we I think it will take so much time to cover all of this so that is the reason i am choosing all of this which you will be most probably using most of the time so one we are having before so this will basically add something in your before of this element and here i want to do i want to add a content and i'll add this one that before content save this now see what will happen see now this is basically added here before content all right 
if i go here you can see that we are having this before content you will be also able to give a color so let's i'll give a color of red and everything will work whatever properties you want to do you will be able to apply to this uh, before content similar goes for after now this is very simple you just have to take after will give a content let's say i want to give a content of star three star save this will go there so these three star are coming if i go here you will be able to see this one after again all the other properties that you want to use this will work let's i'll give a color of green so this will be now applicable here so this is all about the before and after now what else we need to do we also need to learn about css variables now one thing i want to mention one thing is that whenever you write any html so here in html element or basically in the html document we have something called a root element which has the higher precedence higher precedence means here in this html element i will be able to do something like this so you can see that this is our root element so here whatever uh things that will be uh, applying here basically let's i will give some variables name or something like that we will be able to access these variables in all the elements that we'll be using for styling inside this particular uh, css file so for example let's say uh, there is a p and there is a h1 so i'll just copy this and i'll paste it and then i'll do a h1 here so this is my h1 text and let's say there is a button so this is my button now for each and every element there is this weird requirement that you have to give the same background color all right i think there is a, something wrong okay i'll remove this so oh what i've done okay so let's format this oh i think something goes wrong man okay so now you have to give the same background color in all the elements obviously one thing you can do simply that okay i'll take p h1 and then button and then i'll give some background color here but let's say it's not that much simple your application is very complex and you need to write so many css so in that case what you can do instead of rewriting the color or the properties whatever it doesn't matter it has to be only color or background color it can be any property you will be able to basically uh, specify some variables in inside this root element let's say i'll give a background color so i'll do bg color and bg color has to be let's say a black color here all right so this is my bg color that i will be using now this color you will be able to use now using css variables simply take a background color now you have to take a var and then you can see it's already giving such a sanjay okay you want to use this background color as this background oh, sorry background color of these elements using this variable that we are having if i now save this let's go back so each and everything will have a background color of black now let's I'll add another one so we'll add a text color uh, which will be let's say white so now i want to use the same text color here so you'll give color and then you'll use var and inside this you have to use the text color now save this now each and everything will have a uh, text color of white the only thing i want to mention is that so this is what uh, it's doing it's you are not writing this color or basically this property values all the time inside each and every element instead you are just reusing the variables name and this is a very good practice all right so this is another very important uh, concept that you should know all right everyone so we are almost at the end of the our theory section so now let's learn two more uh, properties so one is the overflow and second one is a calculate function so what is overflow so let's say we are having a div here and which will have some content so i'll just copy this and paste it multiple times let's give a class name of content all right now what i'm going to do so here in this content div i'll give a fixed width of 300 px and height of let's say 80 px also will give a background color of red and color of uh, black let's give a font size of 18 px if i now save this now what will happen so you can see that because the content is very large all right this is very very important concept and you will be using most of the names so let's do one thing let's make this one little bit big we'll do 500 px and we'll do 100 px 
So you can see that because the content is large, so it's now overlapping outside the parent div. All right. So how we are going to fix this one? So here, because the width is fixed, you can see that the width is fixed. We can use the overflow property. So overflow will have some values, four values that you can use. So the first one is visible, which is by default. Then we are having overflow auto, then overflow scroll and overflow hidden. If I do here overflow hidden, so that means this will hide all the content, but you will not be able to see this content, right? This is very, very important. You're not able to scroll also and that content is gone. But if I now just remove this one from here, this hide, now you'll see what will happen. You're able to see. So this is, uh, this is not applying here. So that means because the height is fixed and overflow is hidden. So it is hiding all the content, which are basically overlapping outside this particular height after a certain height basically if i do visible which is by default so you'll be able to see the same behavior again but let's say if i give here scroll if you explicitly give here scroll what will happen the you can see that you are getting scroll in both x and y axis and obviously you'll be able to scroll here but you'll be getting this scroll on the y axis level which is not required in this case so that is the reason the best approach sometimes now obviously sometimes you can use overflow scroll but most of the times you'll use overflow auto now overflow auto what it will do it will basically browser will detect that whenever there is a need of a uh, scroll that time only the uh, browser will uh, add a scroll now if you notice here now you're not getting scroll on the y axis you are getting on the x axis because this is what exactly we needed correct so this is how you can use this overflow property so there are four things overflow scroll uh, overflow visible which is by default then you are having overflow scroll overflow hidden it will hide all the content and then we are having overflow auto so this is all about the overflow concept now next we are having another function that is called the calculate function so what exactly is that so let's say i'm having a width of a div of uh, class name which is a card now this div will uh, consist of two paragraph one is a para one and then we are having copy and then we'll have para two all right so now we'll go there and then uh, we'll do something like this first we'll take card we'll do a fixed width of 500 px then we'll do a display of flex all right now uh, and also let's do a background color of green and then color of white now let's see what is happening all right so i think because we have given this before and after let me just comment it out for now these three things so you're having para one and para two what i want to do i will give this para one so which is basically my first child so we'll go there and we'll do dot card p of first child and we'll give a let's say uh, width of 100 px let's save this so now you'll see that we are having a 100 px width but this is uh if you notice here this is taking only this much now here either obviously currently you know that okay i have a width of 500 px so if, if it is 100 px this has to be 400 px so you can give okay pair of for width will be 400 px now this will obviously work now there will be some scenario where you need to basically calculate this particular width so here this calculate uh, comes into picture so how you are going to do that so what we can do let's i'll do a dot card and then i'll do the last child because this is the last last child we are targeting and i'll do a width here we are doing a calculate function what i want to do i want to do a hundred percent so which is my parent width of hundred percent and i want to minus this hundred px that we are using here now this will automatically detect if i now save this refresh this page now notice here how much it will take so now if i go to para 1 this will be 100 px if i go to para 2 this is now 400 px what it is doing it is uh, basically subtracting this uh, 100 percent which is 500 px minus the first one which is 100 px so it is 400 px now there are some rules uh, the first one is basically you have to give this space in between or else this will not work and also it's not about only minus you can use plus divide uh, multiplication everything you can use all right so let's say what we can do for example uh, this width is 500 px right now i want to do instead of fixing 500 px i want to check the browser width let's say i want to take the half of browser width with which will be 50 percent and then i want to add something so here i'll do a calculate 
and then what we can do we will basically do 50 percent plus 150px now see what will happen if i now save this see now this is increasing so what it is done it is basically first it's calculate how much is the 50 percent of this current window so if i cross this one it is now increasing and then it is adding on top of it how you can check that so if i go here right so let's see this one now so this paragraph 2 is now go to computed see it's now 556 because now this will be i think 656 so it is now 100 and it is now my uh, doing the subtraction if i do only calculate let's say 50 percent so this will also work so this will be now completely 50 percent of this current window if i close this so you can see that this will be now 50 percent so this is how you can use this calculate and also the overflow properties so now i think till now we have learned lot of things and for from a beginner perspective i think this will be more than enough to know to start your html and css journey so next what we are going to do will be creating very very simple project because as i already told you this is beginner friendly video so you have to practice all of this and try to implement these concepts in a real uh, project that you will be building so that's all about the theory section now let's move on to the project section hey everyone and welcome back so this is the first project that we will be building although this is a very simple project i have built so what we are going to do when we will be building this particular uh, travel applications we'll be adding some of the more features all right so this is a very simple one you can see that we are having a header and then some of the nav links then there is a heading and a button and if i scroll down there will be some images here all right and then some kind of grid view here and at the end we'll be having one uh, form now this is also completely responsive so if i just uh, go for mobile devices so you can see that so we'll be using some media queries and everything to implement the same all right so let's see now the prime objective of this particular website is that each and everything that we will be building will basically try to see whatever we have learned so far whether we are able to apply those knowledge in this particular website or not so what i have learned you can see that i have a blank uh, folder here so the first thing what we are going to do will be creating our main index.html file and let's build everything from scratch so the first thing what we need to do we have to basically tell the browser that we are using html so we'll do doc type html after that we'll take our html main tag and then this will consist of our head and then we'll be having our body all right now inside this head we'll be having all types of meta tags correct so we'll start one by one so the first meta tag we will be using and that will be the cat set of utf8 then we will be using another meta tag and here we'll be giving a name of viewport and we'll pass the content as which will be width equal to device width we will be discussing all of this again at the end so basically the recap and here what we are going to do we'll also pass a initial scale of one all right next i think we have already discussed that uh, let me just minimize this one we'll be having a title so title will give this one as best travel website or let's give this one as landing page because we are not using it we are not building complete website so we're building a landing page and after that uh, we will be using some of the icons packages for example font or some will be using but let, that we are going to add later now what we need to do we'll create another folder now it's always best practice to create some asset folder so we'll give this one name as assets and inside this we'll create another folder and let's give this one name as css and here we are going to create our styles.css all right now what we need to do so whenever we'll be creating css we have to link this one so i think this we have already discussed so we'll do link so here sorry link and we'll do real as style sheet and we have to basically give the href which will be assets then you have to go to css 
then you have to go to style.css all right till this part this is fine now let's give this on some h1 tag just to run this one so we'll give this one based travel website or landing page let's save this and i'm going to open this one with live server all right so now the first thing is that we have to start working on the header so what we'll do i'll just minimize this one so we will be building one uh, section at a time then corresponding css we are going to build all right so here what i'm going to do i'll remove this one and then give a comment and we'll give this one as header section all right now inside this uh, the first thing what we need to do i think we have already learned in the semantic and non semantic elements that semantic elements is basically elements with a meaning so that means whenever we'll be building this uh, let's say sorry this uh, header here so that means this has a meaning so here what we need to do we have to basically give a header uh, tag and inside this let's go here so you are having a text on the left and the menu items on the right so here what we are going to do we will take a let's say let's take a 3 and inside this now see whenever we'll be creating a real website this will be a link so on click of that let's say we want to go to a different page or we want to go to the home page so for this one inside this we'll we'll be taking a anchor and here i'll give this one name as the same name that we have given that is travel website all right so now here we'll give href and for now we'll give this one as has all right so now this is done so now let's save it so let's go here so we are getting next uh, we have to basically build the menu items on the right so what we'll do uh, here we are going to take our nav and then we will be creating the li items so this will be list item each and every one and inside this will take another anchor and let's give this one name as home first one uh, then we'll take another li we'll take anchor we'll give this one as tour We'll take another li then anchor this will be services and then we'll do something like uh, contact let's give href of has let's save this so we'll go back so we're getting this one so this is fine so this is very simple header structure that we need so now we'll start working on the css part so first uh, we'll go there and also we'll give the ending of the sections we'll give another comment here and this will be our header section all right now let's go to our style now you remember that we have learned in one of the section that is called the universal selector I already told you that sometime that will be very necessary that whenever we'll do universal selector means we have to we will be applying CSS in all the elements that we are having on the page so we'll ha have to take this star and here what I'm going to do for universally I want to make margin 0 and padding 0 and box sizing as border box for all the elements that we'll be using in this uh, application so we'll do padding of 0 we'll do margin of 0 and we'll do box sizing as border box all right save this and see we don't have any margin and padding next we'll take our html and here what we are going to do we'll take a color of this one so this is the color we'll be using next uh, what we are going to do we can we are having this nav section so we'll do generalize if there is any nav or any ul so what we are going to do so we'll see that uh, we are having this list style so we'll do this one as none all right next we are having anchor so whenever there is anchor what i want to do i want to this hide this uh, text decoration all right so you can see that this uh, circle is also gone because of this list style so here i'm going to do text decoration as none all right 
color i'm going to do this one as black and cursor will do pointer this is for all the anchors this is done all right so now let's start uh, styling the header component that we are having so the first thing is that you can see that we are having this header here so you can directly basically target this header element or it's always better to give a class here so we'll give a class of header so we'll copy this now let's go there and we'll give a comment here now you can see that this is all the common style so let's give some uh, style uh, sorry some comment like these all are universal styling which will basically apply in all the elements correct and we'll close this one so this will be universal styling next we'll give our header so this is our header section styling so first we'll start with dot header all right so let's see so first we have to basically make this one a flex display flex so we'll do this one as first we'll do a width of 100 percent next we'll do a display of flex all right so now let's see so you're having display of flex here now what we need to do we have to make this all the items on the right side of this page so how we are going to do that which property we need to use so you can use justify content now can you guess so you have to do space between so you remember the space between means it will basically give you space in the between and there will be no space on the right and left so this is what we want all right next what we will do we'll do align items center we'll do a background color of sorry uh, we'll do a color of white all right and then we'll do a padding of uh, let's make this one uh, padding of 35 px this will be top and bottom and uh, what we can do we'll make this one as 35 or let's do 100 px and zero let's see awesome all right so if i now just inspect and show you so let's see what is happening here okay so you are having display flex then you can see that we are having 35 which is the top bottom we don't have anything so we have zero let's make this one zero px okay and left right we have 100 and then top uh, 35 and these all the other things all right so this is done now next what we need to do so we'll go there and we have a h3 here so this h3 we need to target correct so what we can do we can simply target this class here so we'll do dot header and then we'll target our h3 now let's do one thing let's give a uh, font size of 30 px all right then we'll do a font weight of bold now we'll see whatever we learned so far that we'll try to replicate here now next uh, we will target our header and then the nav so what we need to do all the items that we are having we have to make this one a display flex so that this will come in one line so we'll go here and we'll do dot header and then inside header we should have a nav so which will target the nav so you can see that element then nav and we'll make this one display of flex awesome all right now next what we will do uh, you can see that inside this nav we have a li correct so what we are going to do we'll give a margin here so let's go there so we'll go to a css so we'll do dot header of nav of li and we'll do margin of 0 px and 15 px let's see so there is a space uh, in between and the margin is basically outside right so that is the reason we are giving here now let's say i'll show you one very interesting thing and that is if i now inspect this one because we've given if i go to this li right so you can see that we have margin in all the items now for the first item let's say we don't want to give any margin left so you can see that if i go to computed we have a margin here see on the left side 15 so you don't want to give margin left on the first element so what we can do because we are having here four li so this is our first child of this nav so we can target this first child how we can do that so you have to go to first nav then you have to go to li and then you have to target the first child so let's see how we are going to do that so first we'll go to our header 
then we'll go to our nav then we'll go to li and then we have to basically target our classes which will be a first child so you can see that so what this will do let's see so you can see that if there is a li which is the first child of this nav so you will do a margin left of 0px let's save it so now see we don't have any margin on the left side of this element here all right or basically this li so this is how you need to do it so this is done now next thing what we can do we have to start working on the responsive also so what we will do each and every uh, component will be creating we should always do this one in mobile first approach also and that is a really good uh, practice that you can do always try to complete each and everything with for all the uh, dimensions or basically whatever responsiveness you required so for this one what we need we have to start working on the media query i think we have already discussed media query so first media query we'll do we'll do at the rate media and here we can target a max width so we'll do a max width of 1000 px and then we'll target another media which will be we'll do a media and then we'll do a max width and i'll explain what exactly we are doing first let me write it down we'll do let's do this one as 700 px now the first thing what we are going to do for a smaller device these items that we are having we should bring this one on the bottom so here all right so when we'll go to smaller device let's say we'll go very small let's see it's breaking right so we want to bring this all the items to the below so how we can do that so to do this one for this one what we are doing if there is less than uh, 700 px for any uh, layout so we'll target our header which is our dot header class and here we are going to make flex direction now remember what we need to do to make this one on the column so we'll make this one as column now see what will happen so uh, i'll do this one so notice this responsive so i'll just decrease so we'll go to 700 now go less than that see what is happening so once it's going to 700 it is coming to the flex uh, direction column although now this is breaking so this we are going to change so here what we can do simply so you can see that uh, once we are having this 700 so you can again target this h3 here and then we'll make the font size a little bit small this is how you need to do so for example let's say i'll do dot header and h3 and i'll make the font size of 18 px now let's see okay now if i go for a smaller device so this is not breaking and the, the nowadays like screen should not be less than this or all right if i now go more than 700 see what will happen so 6 700 see 19 700 now it will be 701 so once it will be 701 it will be this it will be less than 700 so it will be in the below this is what exactly we want now see one thing is that when you see the first thing again i am repeating why i am doing very simple website or basically implementing very simple uh, application in this particular video because these concepts whatever we are applying here the same concept will be applying in a complex project also so that is the reason we should start from very slow and we should implement things very uh, like very simple and then move to the complex project all right so this is one thing we have learned now next thing what i'm going to do so you'll see that once i'll go to this inspect here there there is no space so i'll give some margin bottom of this h2 so we go there and we'll give a margin bottom of let's say let's give uh, 16 px let's save it so there is a margin all right so this is about the 700 px that we need now next we'll go to the 1000 px and here what i'm going to do so i'll target again header class and i'll decrease the padding of 20 px and 50 px the reason is because here we have a uh, padding of 35 and 100 so if i now save this let's see what is happening so you can see that now this padding is now basically getting changed so th this is looking much better and notice here if i go for more than 1000 what will happen so we have 900 now i'll go more than 1000 see the padding will change see now it's taking the previous padding which is okay if i go less so now this is looking good if you if it's good less than 700 so it's going below all right so this is exactly what we want 
all right so this is all about the uh, header main structure that we need now at the end we'll be styling all of this but that is fine that we can do later now next thing what we are going to do we will be basically start working on the our hero page where we'll be having the background and before that let me just open the final output that we are going to build so that it will be easy to follow all right so this is what exactly we are going to build okay now next thing is that we have this hero section but uh, now another thing i already mentioned that we will not blindly follow all of this we will also add some of the new uh, additional feature here so this is just to give you example like this is what we are going to build not similar to this there will be some changes also so this means this header is done now next uh, we have to start working on this hero section so we'll go to the html structure and here i'll give another comment always give comment here so we'll give this one as hero section all right and let's give a comment of hero section you can give like something like uh, starts and you can give here ends this is also helpful so the first thing is that here i'll take a section because this will be a section again this is a semantic element that we are using and we will give this on a class name of uh, let's give a hero section inside this we will have a div and here i'll give a class name we'll give this one as bg image now this is stands for background image all right next we will take a h1 here now i'll see that h1 way we are using so this is the text so we'll give this one as based travel website and after that we'll be having a anchor you can also take this one as a button that is fine and here i'll do something like browse all places and here i'll give a hre of has and then we'll class of i will do browse all places button so always give the name like this so that it will be other developers uh, for other developers also it will be easy to understand let's format this let's save it obviously nothing will happen now so now let's uh, start working on the css now before that we will be basically adding some of the common thing that we need so the first common thing is that we are using a section component here so we want all the section whatever we'll be using in the application to be to be some styling so for this one what we can do to manage all of this we'll be adding those things inside our universal styling so the main objective is that so that for example let's say we are having anchor right so this style will apply in all the anchors uh, whatever we'll be using similarly what we'll do here we are going to use um, let's take another one so if we use any kind of section so we'll make this one as display flex all the sections then we'll do a flex direction of column and we'll do align items as center all right and we'll do a padding of uh, we'll do for example 130 px or let's make this one 125 px and 100 px now what will happen and point is save this see it's coming here the reason because this is getting applied because we are using a section component here let me just make it big so so this is a section component and this is what we are applying here so we are having a display flex align item center flex direction column and there is a padding all right this is done and now for again for media uh, media queries also we have to write it so we'll take at the red media and here we'll do a max width of uh, 1000 px so below 1000 px we want to change the section so here uh, what we'll do we'll do a section okay so here we'll do a padding of let's make this on 100 px and 50 px so i'll save this now see what will happen so currently we are having a padding of 125 the minute i'll go less than 1000 see what will happen so now see padding is basically changing to this one all right so this is one thing we want to do and next uh, we'll take another media query so we'll do a media and we'll do max width of 600 px and we'll take a section and we'll do for this one uh what we're going to do we'll do a padding of 80 px and 30 px all right so this is done 
now next thing uh, what we are going to do I think for now this is fine let's start working on this uh, background image that uh, we are having so we have to add the image and for this one I what I'll do I already have some images so we'll create a folder here or uh, let's do like this so inside assets we'll create another folder and I'll give this one name as images and I'll just copy paste all the images that uh, I'm having here so the same you can use or also if you have some other images also you can download and just paste it inside this folder and the same images we are going to use all right all right everyone so you can see that I just copy pasted all the images that we are having now let's start working on this hero section so the first thing is that what I'm going to do let me just give some comment here so I'll just copy this and paste it three times so this is our end of header section then we are having another one and another one so this is hero section and this is hero section so the first one is that we are having the main class which is our hero section so we are going to copy this and here i'm going to make this one a position of relative we'll do a justify content of center we'll do a mean height i think these all the concepts we have already discussed 100 vh we'll do a color of white and we'll do text align center all right so you can see that it's coming on the middle here all right so now we will be basically targeting this bg image so here we have to basically give give a background image so uh, let's do one thing let's give a style here and we'll do a background image we'll do url then we'll go to assets then images then we are going to do bg dot uh, jpg save it go back nothing is coming now what you're going to do will copy this class let's go to our style.css now here we'll do dot hero section dot bg image now notice here we are having position of apps relative i think we have already discussed this one whenever we will have the parent one as position of relatives we'll be able to use the position absolute feature we'll give a top of zero and we are going to give left of zero we'll do a width of 100 percent height of 100 percent let's save it all right so this is coming and here we are going to do a background size of cover all right so this is fine all right so now you can see that uh, the image is coming but one very interesting thing is that the text is not showing here so how we are going to change that uh, feature and also if you see here let me just close this so we are having this uh, image all over this place basically so to change this one the first thing we can do i think we have already discussed again this concept also and that is called jade index so here we can give a z index of minus one so by default jade index is zero so if we are giving less than zero so that means it will be below so now you can see the text is coming on the top similarly here on the nav section what we can do let's go to our nav here so we are having this header so here we'll give a position of absolute we'll give top of zero left of zero let's save it now you can see this is coming and if you want you can also give a z index of let's say one for this one all right so now this is uh, looking fine now next thing what we are going to do let's go to our html structure so we are having this h1 so we'll target this one so we'll go to below and then we'll target dot hero section of h1 so here uh, we'll do a margin bottom so we'll give some margin bottom 15 px and uh, what else let me just save this so this is fine also i think we have some style here let me check uh let's do one thing let's give some font size also here so we'll go here and let's give a font size of for example 40 px uh, let's see what is the font size here so we have font size of 60 px so we'll give this one as 60 px also we'll give a font weight of bold or bolder awesome also there is a color so we'll give a color of black all right so this is done now next thing we are having this uh, button so we have to style this button correct so we'll give a class name so let's go there 
and here we'll give a class name so I think we already have class sorry so we'll copy this and we'll go to hero section then we'll target this class so we'll do a color of white uh, we'll do a border radius of 4px we'll do text uh, what else uh, no let me just do some background color so background color will do this one d7 0672 now doesn't matter you can change this one whatever you like we'll do a font weight of 700 or let's make this one 800 which is basically bold and we'll do a text align of center save this now let's see what is happening all right so you can see that this is looking like this so now what we need to basically change here so that it will look similar to this so you have to add padding correct so we'll add a padding here also so we'll do a padding of for example what else we'll do 20 px and 45 px let's save it let's see all right so this is fine now you have to add some font size so here we'll do a font size of uh, how much we'll do 30 px let's see how this is looking see see it doesn't have has to be similar to this one all right whatever we can do we can change the functionality or anything now see here another thing i want to let's add i want to add some transition so that functionality also we have done so remember we have done this one whenever i'll just hover this one let's say i want to change the background color and also i want to change the color of this text so let's see so here what we can do uh, so we'll take hero section then we'll do dot browse button and then off hover correct and here let's say i want to do a background color of something else so we'll do this one as black for now and then we'll color of white so if i now save this so we'll go there so it's basically changing now i need to do some transition here so remember we have done the transition so uh, which property that you want to use so I want to do both color and background color so I'll do color and to do it for two seconds so this is what I've done then we'll go comma and then we'll do background color and I want to do this one for two seconds also so now let's save it now let's see what is happening so I'll go over so it's changing I remove this is changing again all right and also you can give some uh, method also so for example let's say ease in and here i'll give ease in ease out let's see what is happening so i'll go there you can see this is now changing also you can do something like you can transform this one so for example let's say on hover i'll do it transform and i'll do scale of 1.2 so i want to do some scaling so see what is happening see and let's make this one 1.1 I remove awesome so now this is uh, what we have done now next thing what we need to do we have to start working on the uh, this sorry we have to start working on the responsive for this one so we have to write media query for this section also so we'll go here and let's take another media and we'll do here let's do a max width of 800 px so below than that so the first thing is that we have to target the hero section so here we'll do a mean height of 600 px so previously we have done 100 vh then we have dot hero section of h1 and here we want to make the font size of 45 px so let's we'll see what will happen now let's save this now what else we are having i think h1 we are having this is fine and we are having a button so we'll take a hero section dot browse all places button so here we'll change the padding so for this one we'll do 15 px and 40 px let's save it now let's see so i'll go for responsive so now let's say i'll go below 600 see what is happening so we'll notice here so i'll go for this one right here section we're already having so let's I'll go less than 600 so mean height of 600 if I go here the font size is also getting changed if you want you can add more also like for example here it is breaking but for now I think this is fine if you want you can add another one let's on 450 so let's say I will do another media query 
let's do here so we'll do at the rate media and we'll do a max width of 450 px and here i want to target the hero section and then we'll do h1 and let's make the font size of 30 px if i now save this so now you can see that this is now changing we can also change the button style also for example browse all place button will do padding of for example 10 px 25 sorry do 10 px 25 px and we'll do a font size of for example how much we have done previously 40 no we have larger than that so let's make this one as 20 px let's see what is happening see now it's very less mm, let's make this one th 30 and we'll do one two okay now see so this is now changing okay so this is how you need to do so this part is done now next thing what we are going to do will we start working on this uh, popular places uh, section so first we'll create the uh, let's go there and let's create our another structure now if you noticed how we are doing each and everything we are explaining that why we are doing that and based on that so this is how you have to do whenever you'll be doing for the first time and this is very very important i'll go there and let add another one and this will be our popular places starts so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here all right next again we'll take another section and we'll give a class name of popular uh, let's make this one a little bit more so that it is it will be easy to understand our popular places all right so here again we'll take a3 sorry we'll take a3 and we'll give a class name of title and here we'll do our popular places all right let's save this let's see what is happening so we're having this one all right now next after this we'll have some text so we'll take p and then we'll do some lorem content that is fine you can change whatever you want and then after this you can see that we are having this uh, line here so for this one either we can take a div or it is better to take another one which is called the hr all right so this is kind of a horizontal line that we are taking next if i go here so we are having some uh, images correct so what we can do we can take ul and let's take this one as class name we'll do popular places grid all right and then we are going to take some li and for each and everyone we are going to give some background images but for now let's just copy and paste it we have five images i think one two three four five correct so now let's format this save it for each and everyone i will take a background image which will be url so we'll go to assets images then background image one so we'll copy this here let's paste it and then this will be background image of five this will be four this will be three and this will be two let's format this now let's save it let's see what is happening nothing will come obviously because you have to write styling but text is coming so now let's start working uh, on this uh, testing for this particular section so we'll go there let's add another uh, comment here so this will be our popular places styling and we'll copy this and we'll paste it here all right everyone so let's start uh, styling the popular places section so the first thing what we are going to do you can see that uh okay let me just go a little up so we are having this class name then we are having a h3 paragraph this hr and then ul now what we can do because you can see that this part will be common in all the section now this is a very important point i just want you to notice because 
whenever you build any kind of uh, website we'll get similar kind of thing where most of the times we'll get this uh, see this part here is common if i now scroll down you can see this part also is common same for this one so what you can do we can basically generalize this css for this particular section so for this one what we are going to do so here we'll go and you can see that we're using a h3 of class title so you can go there in our universal styling so where we are having all the common styling so there we can basically check if there is a section and then we are having h3 of title class so we'll do some styling and it will be basically applicable whenever we will be using the same so let's say here i'm going to use this color now if you want you can use any color 414a4f then we are uh, we'll use a font size of 32 px font weight of bold all right we'll do a margin bottom of 35 px and we'll do a text align of center and also here i'll show you another thing that if you want to make a transform so let's say whatever text you're having you want to capitalize that one so for this one you have to use this text transform so whatever you'll do let's uppercase or capitalize so it will do capital for all the letters if i now go there so you can see that it's sorry it's cap uh, it's it will do capitalize only for the first letter sorry i'm wrong if i make this one to uppercase then it will be all the upper so you can see now all of these are in capital but we don't want like this we want to do capitalize only the first letter all right so this is first thing next you can see that we are having a paragraph inside this section so again we can do a common styling for this part also so you go there and we'll do if there is a section and there is a paragraph so i want to do something like this we'll do max width of 800 px we'll do text align center we'll do margin bottom for this one also we'll do let's say 40 px and uh, what else we'll do a padding of 0 px 20 px left and right and i think this is fine let's save it so we are getting this now if you go here you can see that there is a line height i think this is also we've discussed that line height we can give either in pixel or if we give in like one or two so what will happen it will multiply with the current font size if i now save this see there will be space in between so it is multiplying let's say the font size is 10 px so the line height will be 10 into 2 which is 20. so this is done now next what else we are having you can see that uh, if i now go here we are having this grid here so the same grid uh, styling that we can do or let's do one thing we can go and then let's go to our evil so we are having this popular places grid so let's copy this now i'll go to our individual section so we'll start uh, styling this one so we'll do popular places grid we'll do first width of 100 percent we'll do display as flex now here what we are going to do let's say we want to wrap all the items so which property we need to use we have to use flex wrap so if there are more items it will wrap into multiple lines and we'll do center justify content all right so this is done now next thing what else we are having uh, we are having this i think ul and then li okay so li we need to target so another thing what we can do let's copy this parent class name so i think we'll uh, use a parent class name here also so that means our, our popular places inside this if there is a popular places grid then we'll do our popular places dot popular places grid and then inside this there is a li so this li we are targeting all this li so the first thing is that we'll do a height here of 350 px we'll do a padding of 20 px we'll do a border radius of 4 px now here first we'll do a background size of cover and then we have done this one already i don't have to explain again so background position i'll do this on center only so we have discussed right center top center left uh, right center those things right bottom so we are doing center and then we'll do a background color of this one all right now let's format this save this so you can see that we are getting this one but this is breaking so this part we need to check so how we are going to do similar to this one that we are having here so for this one what we can do simply we, we also have discussed this property so i'll just show you so let's say we'll add another class name here for example we'll add a class name of uh, we'll do special 
class special image class one and we'll copy this one i will do special image class small we'll copy this and we'll do this one as large now let's copy this one now what i'm going to do here we'll target dot our popular places dot popular places grid of li dot special item class small so we are targeting that class now here we are going to use flex basis i think this we have discussed so what will happen this flex basis if i give 40 percent here let's save it now let's see all right so nothing is changing or let me check what is the problem here okay that is not applying i think we have done something wrong oh, okay so you have to make this one small so now let's see okay now i can see that what will happen if i go to this image right let's go to computed so you can see that it's taking a width so this we have discussed right whenever there is a display flex and we have given flex basis so it will be considered as a width and then we'll add another one let's say we'll add the large one so we'll copy this so we'll do dot or popular places dot popular places grid of li dot large and we'll give a flex basis of 60 percent all right so this is what we're going to do so now let me just close this one first and let's save it now let's see what is happening okay so you can see that we are getting this both the images this is exactly what we want now we now here you can see that we are having small large then again large small and then large so the same we can add basically so we'll copy this one uh, sorry so we'll copy this small one and then we'll add here and uh, this will be this will be small let's make this one large and again this one i'll make this one as large now let's save this let's see So we're having all of this all right now another thing i just uh, forgot to mention in the theory lecture there is another property in the background that is called the background clip so how much you want to clip the image so you can see that there are some values here so you're having border box which is the default padding box and content box so here let's see if you use padding box it will extend till the inside edge of the border and if we are using content box it will extend till the edge of the content box so this one we can use <clears throat> in this case to get this uh so we can go here and <clears throat> sorry so you can just do background clip and we'll do this one as content box now let's save this now let's see so we'll be getting this uh, uh gap here all right and this is looking fine so this is all about this our popular place section that we are having now next what else we are having we are having this destination and then this uh, again this three grid view so here what we are going to do again now if you notice this part and this part whatever we have done this exactly same the only difference is that we forget to do this hr1 so this styling also we need to do so for this one what we can do we can simply write a common style for this part so we'll go to our main styling section and here we'll add a hr so if there is a any hr so we'll do width of let's say 150 px uh, we'll do height of 2 px We'll do background color of this d7 0672 we'll do a font weight of 800 and we'll do text align center let's save it let's see so you're getting this uh, line here you can see that now if you want you can also give some margin here also so let's say i'll give a margin bottom of 35 px we are getting this margin so this is fine now next uh, let's working on this uh, we are having this destinations so we'll go to our structure and let's give another comment so this will be our destinations starts copy this and this will be ends all right now here we'll take another class sorry another section and let's give a class name of our destinations 
all right inside this again we'll take the same h3 with a class of title because this style we don't have to write so we'll do destinations all right so let's save it now let's see what is happening so we are getting this destination here next we are having a paragraph so we'll again do a paragraph and here again we'll use some dummy data and after this we'll do the hr see now how we, it is helpful that we don't have to write multiple uh, time the same css so we are getting the similar structure here all right so this is done now next thing is that uh, what else we are having we are having another evil and here we'll do class name of our destinations grid and uh, we'll take a li here and inside this we will be using a icon so for this one we are going to use font awesome so let me just show you how we are going to use this so basically we will be using is uh, this content delivery network or which is basically called cdn and that cdn link we have to link in this inside this head tag so i'll just quickly so let me just open it all right so you can see that i just opened this font awesome cdn uh, from here so you just have to use this link and this one we have to link so i'll copy this so now this will basically consist of all the icons that we will be able to access easily so we'll go there and let's uh, link it here so we'll do link and then here what we need to do we have to pass a href where we are going to use this one and here we are going to use a real of style sheet that's it all right now let's start working on our structure so here what exactly we are having so inside li so for icon we are going to use this i tag and here we have to use a class name for each and every one we are having different different class name for font awesome let's say we want to use so you have to use fa which is the prefix and then you have to basically give the name of the icon so let's say i want to use the earth icon so it will be globe now let's save this now let's see what is happening here so you can see that we are getting this icon so this is first one next after this we'll be having a h4 and then we'll give the destination name which is let's say paris and again i'll give a paragraph and some dummy data so this is the structure that we need now next uh, we'll copy this because we'll have similar structure and we'll paste it three times so for this one we'll use a suitcase like travel and for this one we'll do map uh, marker we'll give this one a japan and for this one we'll give usa let's save this and let's see what is happening obviously this will break now but that is fine so we are having three icons this is all about the structure we need now before that another thing we want to do so these images for smaller devices we have to manage this also so for this one what we need to do uh, let's go to our this section that our places popular places so here we need to take some media queries we'll take another media query and here we'll do a max width of 1000 px so below that what we are going to do we are having this dot our popular places dot popular places grid then li dot special so special image class small and large both so we are having this one and then we are having dot our popular places dot popular places grid dot li dot special uh, image class small so for both we are going to do a flex basis of 100% so that it will take the full full width so now let's see let's format and save this so now let's go there so if i do inspect now let's go below 1000 so what will happen so now it's full you can see that automatically it's uh, managing the space if i go be upper that so it's basically managing here and this is looking nice so this is fine next we are having uh, this destination so here we'll start with the main one so what is the main uh, class name here we are having we are having our destinations so we'll copy this and let's give another comment here so this will be our destinations all right so here we'll give our destinations so first uh, what we'll do let me just target the li first i think 
uh, what we can do first we need to also give the class name to the main grid which is our uh, our destination grid yeah so we'll copy this so first we'll target this one dot our de destination grid so here we'll give a display of flex and we can use the same class name that we are we are using here also so we'll give with 100% justify content center and flex wrap is wrap same one and let's save it now let's see so this is fine now next thing what we need to do we'll target our destinations dot our destination grid then we are having a lie so here we'll do a padding of 0 px 30 px we'll do a flex basis of 33 percent all right and we'll do a text align of center if i now save this now let's see what will happen so now this will automatically take the half uh, one third of the width because we have given flex basis of 33 percent then we are having the icon so for icon we need to target the i element so we'll do our destination dot our destination grid and here we are having li then we are having i so here we'll do a font size of 50 px for all the icons we'll change the color so the red color we'll use so we'll do d70672 and then we'll do a margin bottom of 25 px let's save this so this is now getting changed also let's give a cursor of pointer this is done now what else we are having we are also having this h4 so we'll target the h4 so we'll do our destinations dot our destination grid then li of h4 so we'll do color of 555 then we'll do a font size of 20 px and we'll do margin bottom of 25 px that's it so now this is fine so if i go here let's see what is happening yeah i think this is almost looking similar let's make some font size little bigger so we'll have this p here so we'll do dot our destinations dot our destination grid li of p so we'll do font size of 18 px font weight of bold and we'll do margin of zero I think let's make this on 14 px and we'll do this one as 600 mm, 16 <laughs> let's see how this is looking yeah I think this is fine all right so this is all about the destination part we need now we need to do little bit of media query for this section also so the first uh, media query we need so we'll take a media then we'll do a max width of 1000 px so first uh, we will change the flex basis for smaller devices so we'll do dot our destinations dot our destination grid then i think we are having the li here so we'll do a li and we'll do flex basis of 70 percent for larger device and we'll do margin bottom of 60 px that's it and now let's see what will happen if i now save this let's go for less than 1000 all right for last one if i go here right so you can see that for this li we are having this margin so you have to remove this one so just like we have done for first child we have to do this one for last child i think now you will be getting so we'll copy all of this paste it here and we'll target the last child so we'll do li of last child and for last child we want to do margin bottom of 0px so you don't want to give any margin let's save it so now see for last one we don't have any margin all right and next for below 600 so we'll do another media and we'll do max width of 600 px for this one what we'll do we'll again target our destinations dot our destination grid of li and for this one we'll do flex basis of 100 percent so we want full width all right now let's see what will happen if i go less than 600 so now it will be taking full width full you can see and these all are looking very nice everything is working fine now next at the end we are having the footer section sorry not footer basically the subscription section so there is a subscription so now let's start working on that part also so this will be subscription 
starts here let's copy this and this ends here now for this one also again uh, the same structure so we'll take another section and we'll take a class name of let's say subscription and here uh, what we are going to do we'll take another h3 and we'll give the same class name of title and this will be subscribe now something like that then we'll take a paragraph and here we'll take another some dummy data and then we'll take our hr all right so now this will automatically create that uh, here so you can see that we are getting now subscribe now then we are having this icon here now next what else we need we need to basically create a form so we'll take a form here and we'll take an input we'll take a type of let's say text we'll give a placeholder of enter your email all right and here we'll take a anchor and we'll do subscribe now something like that and we'll take a href of has for now and class will do subscription 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 what i'm doing button all right let's save this now let's style this also so this will be very simple so first uh, we are having this subscription so we'll go there so we'll add this on subscription starts here so here we'll do a background color of 575757 all right then we'll do dot subscription and we have to target the form so form will do display as flex so that the button and the input will come side by side we'll do align item center i'm not explaining all of this i hope for now we'll be able to get it justify content will do center and flex wrap we are going to do wrap and max width will do 800 px all right and let's make a width of 80 px 80 percent so max means it will be not be more than that let's save it so you're getting this one this is fine so now what we're going to do we'll target our input so we'll do dot subscription then we are having form then we are having input inside this so we'll do a padding here of 15 px we'll do align items sorry not align items we'll use a flex of one so flex means it will take the maximum of it will stretch basically this also we have discussed we'll give a margin right of uh, 25 px we'll do font size of 18 px and uh, what else we need we'll do a color of this color let's save this awesome this is fine and at the end we are having the button so we'll do subscription then we are having form then we are having dot subscription button i think so let's copy this so for this one what we are going to do we already have some button uh, class style that we have written yeah so this one only we can use and this also we are going to uh, do some transition so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here then we'll go here we'll copy this we just have to change the path so for this one this will be this button not that one so we'll copy this and we'll change this one with this all right let's save this now let's see so you can see it's changing now there is basically some padding issue so what we can do let's change the padding a little bit so here we'll make this one as 18 px and we'll do this one as 42 px let's see how this is looking okay we'll do a little bit less now let's see 15 
yep i think this is fine all right now next uh, what we are going to do we'll take a media query so this is almost at the end so we'll do a media query now if you want you can write all of this inside only one media query but i'm breaking inside uh, into multiple sections so that it is easier for understand all right max width of 800 px will do and we'll take this subscription then we'll do form then we'll do input and here we'll do flex basis of 100 percent and we'll do a margin of 0 px 0 px 20 px 0 px let's save this now let's go for smaller devices awesome so now this is also breaking automatically and you can see that this is looking nice so this is now is done and you can see that we have almost applied all the uh, concepts that you learned so far so this is all about the project so see how i have created that i obviously created very simple uh, website you may say that it's not much functionality but if you are able to create all of this at the first it will be easier for you to implement larger project also let's do one thing this is looking little odd so let's change some of the styling for this li here so we'll go to the top so we're having header section then li so we can target here so we'll do dot header then we'll do nav then li we'll do font size of 18 px we'll do font weight of bold let's see how this is looking all right i think this is fine all right so that's all for this particular project now uh, what i'll suggest you that take some of the very easy template from google and then try to apply these uh, whatever logics that we have learned so far into that project obviously you will be stuck at the first but you have to whenever you'll stuck that how we can what property we need to add at this place search in google and then try to implement the website similar or basically something like that and it will definitely help you in your web development career all right everyone so that's all for this particular video i hope that this video will basically help you a lot if you are a complete beginner in html and css till now if you have practiced all of this you will be easily able to create any simple website now believe me this will be a very long journey as i already told you so next six months you will become a full stack developer i can guarantee you that what i want you to do is that whatever concept that we have learned so far try to implement those in a real project and it will definitely going to help you if you like this particular video give a like comment down and please subscribe to my channel if you subscribe obviously it will help me to grow my channel and also it will motivate motivate me to make more videos like this so that's all for this particular video see you in my next video till then good luck and peace